Brian. Yes. What if you could, you know, in good conscience, spend unnecessary money on like a fancy, super high quality version of something you already have? What would it be? Like, is there like a a tool that you're like, I'd love to have the fancy, super cool version of that, but I don't really need it. Hmm. But if you could just snap your fingers and have it. That's a good question. What would it be? You want one of those like table saws with the little thing you can't cut hot dogs with? I was looking at one of those. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I feel like the the threat of cutting my fingers off at any time actually keeps me sharper. Oh, I stay more, pun more cognizant. Yeah. All right. Um, that's a good question. I don't yeah, know. I don't know I what mine would be. That. I don't know what mine would be either. Hmm. Um, I don't know if it'd be like like would I go practical or something ridiculous? I, I it, for me, it might be like a suit. Like a really nice. Oh, I definitely don't have a good suit. That, that's what that, I think that if I could just mm. splurge on one thing that I don't really need, it might just be okay. a really nice, like fancy name brand, fitted, tailored okay. suit. That's just black that I could use forever. It's a pretty good answer. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, have it. I have one fancy pair of shoes, so I'm like, I feel like I'm good there. I don't mm. need more than one of those. Mm-hmm. Um. I wouldn't mind a really fancy, like really high quality winter, like Patagonia winter coat that would last me forever. Like those would be like 500 bucks or something like that. Mm. Like that'd be a nice thing to splurge on. Snap my fingers and just have, would never that'd actually buy it. Yeah, a good jacket. Yeah, like a, I don't like, have, a, like not like a heavy, I have like a ski jacket that I never wear. That's too much. Unless I'm like actively Skiing? in the snow, yeah. <laughs> Like if the kids want to play outside and I'm going to be yeah. outside for at least an hour, then I'm like, I'll wear my actual yeah. jacket. You know what I want to do when I get a sewing machine? What's that? I want to make a poncho. Okay. I want, I would like for rain, I want to, I want to wear like a hooded, I want mm. a poncho. I feel like it's a super practical thing for the rain. I feel like the only ponchos I know are like plastic. No, I want like a oil cloth, like okay. a wax canvas poncho. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. Makes That's sense. Cool. That would be heavy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I feel like you're wearing a blanket. I would look so creepy walking around, like, look like. You would look, yeah, you would look like some kind of, like, villain. Yeah. Super villain. I'm kind of into that. <laughs> <I'm kinda> like... <laughs> Captain, but it, but it also, Poncho. I also feel like it'd be a good, like, first time sewing something because you don't really, you, it doesn't need to really be fitted right. well. That's true. It just has to be a, a big form. going to be thick, though. Well, I want to buy a heavy. Does that make it harder to sew or easier? I, the thicker the I, got, I think it depends on what your machine is, but I'd like to, I'd like mm. to buy a there's a there's a $200 heavy duty sewing machine that I'm hoping can do stuff like that. I have no idea. I, don't I know. know nothing about sewing. I'm going to make a poncho. I'm going to come in here and wear it all day. All right. Cuz I'll be excited. It. We'll see it. Won't be creepy I at see all. It happen. Anyway. Okay. We're recording. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah, well, let me pull my notes then. <laughs> we can get to it. I mean, this is like what the pencast is, so. Yeah. I need a pen. What's it going to be? Ooh. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do retro. <clears throat> I'm going to go 8-bit inventory today. Nice. There we go. New retro. Yeah. You right? You ready? Yeah. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody, to episode number 99 of the Goulet Pencast. This is the last one in the double digits, folks. That's right. Uh, this is where fountain pens are still a thing. I'm Ryan Goulet. I'm Drew Brown. Stretching Drew Brown. And we're here from Goulet Pens to deliver this casual and informal, tangential and extraneous, superfluous and extemporaneous fountain pen show where we talk about what's going on at the Goulet Pen Company and in our fountain pen lives. In today's show, we're going to be talking about our favorite wood pens. We're going to talk about the unique things about working at a pen retailer. The Pilot Vanishing Point Limited Edition 60th Anniversary yet to be released. We have some trending products among the Goulet Pens team. So what did the pen people find compelling? Nerds! And then if we could, if we could have any pen with a different filling mechanism, then what would that be? So like f- changing it up, something that doesn't exist. Always like Franken-penning things in concept. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're going to spot like the new Esterbrook J, Big J, as it's maybe being known. I think it's like... I think that's like a... Is it officially the Big J? I don't J? think it's officially the Big J. Yeah, I think it's, it's the called, Officially, J. it's the Model J. The Model J. There you go. And then we've got nonsensical personal gobbledygook as well. So let's see if we can break two hours again, shall we? We'll start it off with some feedback. 
I think the challenge would be not breaking <laughs> two hours, but okay. Indeed. <laughs> All right. Last time we were talking about eyedropper fillers and how at one yeah. point we had decided to not call them eyedropperable anymore. Um, well, I don't even know officially what to call it. Well, we, we, we talked to everybody and got some good ideas. Okay. And um, our friend Hoyt mentioned barrel filler. The pen is a barrel filler or barrel filled. Okay. This pen can be barrel filled. I absolutely agree with Hoyt. I think that is the best way to describe this pen. If you told someone- So it's more about like what's being filled, right, it's so, not what's doing the filling. It's because it doesn't matter what what is doing the filling because hmm. a syringe can do the filling, a you know anything can do the filling. You could pour it right into there if you've got good aim. Hmm. So you don't need an eyedropper and hmm. you know, and even then, it's not, sometimes not even called an eyedropper. But if you say this pen can be barrel filled, you pretty much know what it can do. There's no, you don't need to define any terminology there. It's straightforward. It's up front. If I can remember, I'm going to start calling them that. Okay. I, I appreciate. You're the, going against like 90 years worth of terminology usage. Well, eyedropper Brian. Bell. You know, just saying. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of tyrants. That sounds like it's from something and I don't know. Oh, it's says. Jefferson or uh, um, Patrick Henry. Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure it's Jefferson. Okay. But anyway, that it sounds. It's a pretty I'm severe sorry. quote to <laughs> apply to this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bit heavy handed, but you know. I'm just saying, you know, applies. sometimes rebellion is necessary. All right. But wow, uh, I don't know what we're, who or what we're rebelling against. <laughs> against 90 years of colloquialism. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> I guess that's what's All happening. Right. Anyway, um, also, <laughs> Jeffrey says, hi, guys. So if I get a nib brush and it gets mixed up with the toothbrushes in the bathroom, can it be used as a toothbrush? Might not be the best idea, though, if you just cleaned up a feed with some green ink on it. Make sure folks keep it somewhere other than the place you scrub your teeth. Seriously, though, the pens you showed are quite nice. Thanks. No, Jeffrey, you cannot use it as a toothbrush. If you use a yeah. feed brush as a toothbrush, I mean, they're completely different things. Yeah, they're entirely completely different. Different. The, the, the bristle mechanics are oh my God. completely Who different. Who knows what would happen? We had Who this knows? specifically designed for By feeds. scientists, engineers, yeah. you know. Custom made. Yeah. Yeah. All paleontologists work mm -hmm. on this thing, you know. Definitely. Uh, and it'd be like, okay, can I use a shoe to, you know, uh, screw in this, uh, you know, bolt on my car. Like, no, it's a completely different thing. Yeah. Totally so, different. Like, um, I'm surprised you even made that connection. Like, who in the world would connect a unrelated. feed brush to a toothbrush? That's yeah, you got quite the imagination there. Quite the imagination. Yeah. Jeffrey. So, Classic Jeffrey. Yeah. Oh, Jeffrey. That's all right. Um, <laughs> and then one final so one for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I got so many... Uh, uh, Instagram DMs like, dude, you finally got the Droulet toothbrush. And I, every <laughs> single one of them, I replied with the pretty much, you know, some iteration of, uh -huh. yes, the most advanced piece of fountain pen <laughs> science, you know, the science. Re revolutionary yes, technology in, ever conceived in the last 90 by years. mankind. That's right. Yes. All right. Sassy says, hi, Brian. Hi, Drew. Here's an idea. Make an ink that is scented like buttered popcorn. Ooh. Wouldn't that be fantastic? then you would just want buttered popcorn all the time. Well, it's like I one think... of those smells that no matter where you are or how hungry or anything, you smell it and you're like, I now want popcorn. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, Ferris Wheel Press puts a lot of stuff in their inks. I don't know why they couldn't just make buttered popcorn smell like buttered popcorn. Yeah. Maybe just put some actual like movie popcorn butter in the ink. And then you would nothing could go wrong. Two things at once. Nothing could go wrong. You would get a more genuine <laughs> butter popcorn appearance, and it would smell. I mean, well, it'd smell like butter. It wouldn't smell like a popcorn. It's a lubricant. It, I, I, yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't know if it would flow through a pen. That would be an interesting experiment. Right. I have no idea. I have some movie theater butter in my home. I could oh, bring really? it in, and we like could... the liquid. Pump absolutely, kind of stuff. yeah. That's I, how I make my my popcorn. I didn't know. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, well, I buy I buy a, a you know a jar of just uh, kernels. You know, uh -huh. I pop them in a pan on the stove, and then after I'm done, a I pan. Yeah, in a pot. What are you a cowboy? A pot. Yeah, I don't use micro. I don't have a microwave, Brian. I st I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand either. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do. You know, make your life a lot better if you had a microwave. It's really good popcorn though, and it, it yeah, I, true. I, I don't have anything burned, and all the kernels pop. But then actually, you, now, but now then you, you mentioned you it, you need to get the you need to get the oil and just go gloop gloop gloop, shake yeah. shake shake, gloop, okay. gloop gloop. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll bring some in. We can make some ink with it. If you bring it in, I smell it. I'm gonna want it, <laughs> day or night, no matter what. Um, all right, I got some I got some feedback too. This is from Bert. <clears throat> says, 
for your target, the A, the what? The A-T-L-A-T-L. Be safe. So, so your literal target that you built. The target. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I actually, I the wasn't going atl, to. Atl, atl? So I wasn't going to. Uh, Is that yeah. like a weapon that yeah, you go, can you, throw? You can go ahead and search that. Um, I've seen this. Uh, it is a an ancient. It, it basically preceded the bow. It was an ancient way to it's like a spear. It's a spear. It's a spear chucker. So it's a it's a spear that. Kind oh, of, it's a device. It's just a stick. Um, but the spear kind okay. of attaches onto the stick. And you know, you in the way like... a bow would attach. Sorry, in the way an arrow would attach to a bowstring. There's a notch, and it would fit into the notch. And then you just have you seen those things you can use to fling like dog balls like tennis yeah, balls yeah it's basically that it's that but it's for like a it's, spears it's a chuck it but for spears yeah i've never heard yeah. of or seen this thing so but you can get some crazy distance with these things and you can throw very long spears a very long way but yeah that this was kind of the what uh the the precursor to the bow and arrow i believe so okay uh bert wants you to um build one of these and be safe with it apparently sounds like i need to make one of these I'm not going to buy one. I'm going to have to make oh, one. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I mean, if you're already making a spear, might as well make a atlatl. Something tells me this is like, you know, some sort of um, a- ancient South American thing. According to Wikipedia, it was the weapon of choice of a serial killer in the 2020 action thriller, The Silencing. What? Yep. What an impractical. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. That's like, all right. I don't know. Interesting. Okay. Learn something new every day. Thank you, Bert. Addle, addle. Appreciate that. All right, let's see what else we got. Spider Wrangler says, kind of surprised Brian holds to Cliff Bar dates as expiration. He seems much more of a best buy is just a suggestion type. Well, that is very true. But if it's like a year yeah. or more and it's been- So you do have a limit. Like crumpled up in my bottom of my backpack and like not particularly cared for or controlled or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if I actually threw How how does it make you feel that you have a, you know, that that, uh, spider wrangler just immediately felt like, Brian's probably a... It seems like I'm a... Yeah. I'm a... (laughs) How does that make you feel like that? that's the outward rejection that you, you know, get out there? I mean, I'm like, I'm like a... I'll do, I'll give it the smell test, (laughs) right? right. So it's like if there's some yogurt or something like that. Oh, yes. It's like past its expiration, I'll like open it up and smell it. And I'm like, oh, it smells normal. I mean, yogurt's already mold, right? Yeah, it's already cultured. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I guess technically if I wanted to like, you know, do that, I could do that with a cliff bar. That's probably why I left them in my backpack so long. It was like, oh well, they're they're like as an emergency. It's just a cliff bar. Reserve, you know, right. if I get stranded on the side of the road, I'm not gonna worry about an expiration date. That's I'm just gonna true. eat whatever I have. That's very true. Yep. All right. Fair enough. Uh then the Robbie says, I love that the turkey hammock appears at the end of the pen cast. My first thought when you mentioned the office was that Dwight had better be the tool pen or you would have missed a great opportunity. Way to nail that one. I felt good about that one. I agree. That was spot on. <laughs> also, the pilot varsity for Stanley was the most perfect of all of them. Bare Thank minimum. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Bare minimum. Phoning it in. Yep. I mean, the varsity is a good pen. It like, is. Not, it is. You know, you know and Stanley, and Stanley, gets, a, Stanley gets a job. He, he's, he does. He's a fine salesman, apparently. Absolutely. So Absolutely. He, gets, he, he does what he is required to do. Nothing right. more. Yeah. And that's the varsity. Yep. Pretzel day. It's Fire City's favorite day. Oh, yeah, very much. (laughs) Cool. All right. Let's uh, talk about some new stuff, shall we? All right. Well, first thing we got to talk about is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Earth Origins fountain pen. Now, these are Brooks resins, so they look awesome. Let's be real. Uh, We have two pens, water and earth. They look awesome. Lovely. Amazing. It's literally the bullet point you wrote for me. It's just lovely. They like you have to say it. It is lovely. Like they you, are both lovely. Absolutely stunning. This, Separately this was, together. When any we, combination. When we got the samples of these pens, we all just immediately said yep. We're just like, yep. Like there was no Obvious. debating, no Obvious. questioning, didn't ask the price. We're just like, these these need to happen. I mean, to be fair, pretty much most resin Homo sapiens, I'm like, yeah. This, that's true. This kind of works for me. Yeah, that's true. Which is interesting because the the volcanic resin is yeah. like such their iconic thing. And I do love that material, but I also really love the resin. Yeah, so so it's not just the volcanic resin that makes the Homo sapiens popular. Yeah, it's everything. Yeah, Total it's, package. It's, it's a good pen. So, um, but yeah. so which one of these do you like better? Because the earth has a very unique That's depth one. and pattern to it, but it, the other one's blue and green and you're definitely a blue and green guy. So 
I mean, it's so tough for me to deviate from the blue and green. I know. I mean, it's lovely. I'm, I'm going to have to go with the earth, though, because it's so unique. And they have that, it almost looks like sand kind of um, it is a really veined throughout the pen. It's such a pen. cool combination of colors it really, on that earth. It's like, it's like sand and teal. I love that teal, too. Yes, that's true. Like it does have, last it does week, have your like, teal in there. Yeah, but there's also that teal kind of happening in the water. Yeah, that water. Sorry. Yeah. That water's doing. <laughs> now that I pull them up and look at them both again, I'm like, yeah, the water. But just just by a little bit. Yeah. The, the other one's They're really both cool. Absolutely too. gorgeous. There's yeah. not going to be many of these either. So um, definitely mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. check them out if they're still here by the time this Dang, these look awesome. Airs. Gosh. Now, these are not going to be like translucent no. like the, you know, some other resins they've had in the yeah. past. But it right. doesn't matter because all you need to see is the material because it looks awesome. Oh, anyway. Wow. Okay. I like transporting Calm myself down, looking at these. Okay. <laughs> and then um, the other pen that we have is the one that we're going to feature today in the spotlight. This is the Esterbrook Model J or the Big J as it might be called. Um, so this pen is in like the 265 range and these are going to be ebonite pens. So it's kind of cool. It's like definitely more of a kind of vintage throwback, like obviously Esterbrook is known for. Um, and it's kind of cool. Today I've got my own vintage J hey. that we're going to show compared to the new ones. Um, but anyway, check them out. They are ebonite. Uh, there's a like lotus green and antique rose, which is like a mottled brown kind of a color. So yeah, pretty cool. And ebonite's uh, not, it's not a material you see so often in pens these days. Nope. Or hard rubber, as it's been known to be called as well. Anyway, that's all I got. What about you, Drew? Ferris wheel press inks, you know. Okay. They happen. Surprising. Surprise, they, surprise. Like, so rarely come out with new inks. And they're doing, the, they're doing kind of a formula at this point where mm -hmm. they're releasing a fairy tales color and mm. then a standard edition color. So they okay. did that again. The fairy tales color in this case is called Poison Envy. Mm. And it is lovely. Compelling. It is very, very pretty. So it's a purple ink and then it has green shimmer. It's like green and uh, green and pink shimmer. So mm. it's like dual shimmer. So it's a very, okay. very pretty color. So this cool. is the fairy tales bottle. So it's gonna be the smaller um, yeah. 20 mil for uh, 20 bucks. So yeah. um, there's that, and then a, you know, comparably subdued color, um, <laughs> Magnificent Majestic, what is it? Majestic Maple, Majestic Maple Syrup. And that yeah. is a light brown with some shimmer. Uh, let's see, Champagne Shimmer is what they're saying this is. Okay. A natural wood tone brown with hints of Champagne Shimmer. Just like you find in nature, all those logs that have shimmer in them. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> how do you feel about this as a brown It's too light for person? me personally. Really? Yeah, a okay. little, little okay. too light. It needs to be a little more, uh, this is like one step below Robert Oster Cafe Crema, which is one of my favorites. Okay. But it is very nice. I I, I personally wouldn't call it syrup because um, in my mind, syrup is a little bit darker. Mm. I would probably go with I would call it something like a lighter wood because that is what it reminds me of. It does remind me of like a very light colored wood. Um, but then maybe maple wood is not, is what I should be. Maple wood is lighter in color. Yeah, so yeah. if they just called it maple without the syrup, I think that would be a little bit more. Yeah, I could definitely, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's because it's like a tan beige kind yeah, of color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe, I don't know, maybe if there's a lot but of But I've never used, shimmer. I've never used a light brown like that with shimmer. So that's kind of makes me curious. Yeah, that is interesting. So we'll see. But uh, Poison, they definitely fit within their. Yeah, it needs like, for for me, for it to feel more like maple syrup, as you would know it, is it's got to be more yellow. I yeah. That's what's missing. A little, a little darker, more ambery. Little more yeah, more amber. Mm -hmm. That's what. Yeah. But I mean, it's very nice looking color. It yeah. look, Honestly, it looks more like maple wood color. Yeah. Than anything. But so there we have it. Okay. Some new stuff. Go. You heard it here. Drew doesn't like it being the brown person that he is. That. Thinks it's the worst it's brown that he's ever not seen. In the top yeah, couples, you've spoken. Can't oh, take it back. You know, if you want to talk more about wood, stay tuned to the Q and A section. Oh, of good today's segue. pencast. Good segue. Which is happening? Going to do that right now. <laughs> right now. All right, Drew. All right, Brian. You ready for this one? <laughs> Are you ready for this oh, one? Because I I, re re I read this question wrong twice oh god before See, i actually oh my god comprehended in my brain what the question i think that you, i think that sometimes you see a question and you you just make I see it what i want to yes, see yeah, yes very much so 100 percent. very much so <laughs> okay so anyway yep um tani uh matsutani uh sorry tani masutani there you go tani ma sutani tani masu tani some variation of that asks cool. us, or in Brian's case, him, 
Tell us about wood pens. Do you have a favorite? And because I'm a glutton for punishment, I went ahead and assigned this one to Brian. So when I- Because he has feelings about wood. When I first read this question, I pretty much ignored the pen so th- part. So you, you think they were just saying, please, They're Brian, like, talk about wood for an hour. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically. I very much interpreted this as a, tell us about wood. Just, Do you have a favorite? And I was like, I got some favorite. And I literally like wrote out my notes you saw like of some my like, favorite woods. So you saw some like heavily redacted version. It just yeah. says, tell us about wood. And favorite, and I was and literally was thinking like of like out. furniture and like all kind of stuff. And then I and then I reread it, and I was like, "Tell us about wood pens." Oh, okay, wood pens. So I need to talk about my favorite woods that's, that I used in so pens. That, that's why most of this is grayed out. Yeah, because this is stuff. That I you literally were... thought through the whole question, and then I reread the question. I was like, "Oh, this isn't this isn't a question about just which random woods I happen to like." It's like, oh, it's about wood oh, pens. And man. then I reread it again. I was like, "Tell us about." wood pens do you have a favorite like pen that just happens to be made of wood yeah. and then i was like oh okay nice. so i'm not just talking about the woods i like that could be used in pen form <laughs> probably not but like actual like commercially made and ones, sold wood ones that pens. we might have had for sale and yeah. i was like oh this is a much shorter answer than we'll what see. i originally came up with um it's well okay yeah so anyway Were you that's where say my it's mind complicated went. no it's not complicated okay no, but this is deep, this is deep dive bait right here. This is I could go off even, a cliff on this question. Even, even as the question is well, in reality, th- however I choose to interpret it, <laughs> which is always, it's it's okay. you know, it's like cliff bar dates. You know, uh, it's just like uh, you know, open to su- interpretation. It's a suggestion. <laughs> you just throw a bunch of words together, and I'll pick the words that I like, and I'll answer the question whatever way most most interesting. You're to me. remarkably self aware, Mr. Goulet. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, after 99 of these, you know, you just you kind of just stop giving a care and so you just go for it i'm just kidding um so anyway this is deep dive bait i will not go onto a diatribe about all the different woods that i like and why but i will talk about the wooden pens that i've seen slash like um first off i have to give a little bit of a disclaimer i have a mixed relationship with wood pens you have very high standards for wood I, pens. i do i when a, do when a wooden pen comes through our store it makes it through a bunch of different hands on our, you know, product evaluation team. And everybody's like, oh, sounds mm-hmm. good, sounds good, sounds good. And then Brian gets a hold of it. And it's like, uh-oh. And I'm like, what is this? Eng-? You know, it's like oak. It's like, is this English oak or is this yeah. French oak? Or where, is this, where, where'd it come you know, from? What, what's red that? oak right. or whatever. And I'm like, I start asking. And our, He's just like, our, you su- know. our suppliers are just like, oh, my gosh, what the heck? You know, I'm asking way more questions than they want to be asked. Um, no. So... To be fair, so be, I have a different opinion on wood pens than most because I started out before I even knew fountain pens making pens out of wood. So that was literally like what I was doing full time. Um, didn't make any money at it, but that's what I was doing with my time was making pens out of wood. Uh, I will just have kind of a hot take here, which is contradictory to my love of wood and wood pens. Wood's just not a great material for pens. It really is just not. Like it's, it's, It's just not the ideal material, which is why you don't see a lot of them. Not that it can't be used, not that it isn't beautiful, but it is just not at all a practical material to be used on a pen. Uh, Because wood in and of itself is not strong enough to be used on a pen. It's not durable enough. Wood's great for a lot of things, but when you take wood and you thin it out a lot and you make it round and then you hold it in a hand and throw it in a pocket and stuff like that, it's just not gonna hold up great. As a, as a general rule. So in order to make wood more durable, you have to do a lot of other things to it. Like you have to have metal parts that are, you know, like metal tubes and stuff like that that are inserted into the wood to give it strength and rigidity. And then the wood and the metal can expand and contract at different rates. So then if you have extreme temperatures and stuff like that, you can get cracking and you can get all kinds of other things. So then certain woods, you either have to be really careful about how you make them and the grain pattern you use, or you have to stabilize them with some sort of resin and put a finish on them. And wood's very absorbent, so it can stain really easily with ink. There's just all kinds of things working against you when you make a pen out of wood. So it's just one of those things that like, there's all kinds of 
luxury items that are made out of things that are just not appropriate materials for that thing. But that makes it special and unique and it's got a lot of cachet and stuff like that. So that's kind of where most wood pens fall into. It's yeah, not the most when practical you, When choice. you use anything organic, you're getting a lot of variables with it. Yeah, that's kind of it. That's, that's kind of it. It's sort of like if you like, that's why you don't put carpet in your bathroom. Like it's just, you're just asking for a lot of trouble, right? It, you could do it, but you, it's going to come with some you certainly considerations. Can, but it's going to be higher maintenance. You're going to have to be a lot more cautious and it's much more likely to get ruined. Have you ever been in someone's house that has had carpeted kitchens? Um, I have I have a couple times. I don't have been in a house that has carpeted kitchens. I have a couple times. It's always quite shocking. Yeah. My uh, my grandfather in the house that my dad grew up in, he had carpeted the walls of their bathroom. What? Yeah, he was not a not a one for style, and it was like seventies like green shag carpet. Oh like my it wasn't god! Good carpet. My my summation is that he somehow like acquired some like leftover carpet. Wow! And it was the most economical like way to cover the wall, because that sounds like something my grandfather would have done that yeah. yeah that sounds like a french canadian lived in connecticut yankee yeah. mentality i mean at sometimes yeah. you know i hear about your dad and your dad seems like a more extreme version of you and this guy seems like a more extreme version oh, of your i think dad. My, i think my dad is like super watered down compared to what my grandfather was right so that's that's yeah. my thing it's like if you're a slightly watered down version of your dad and your dad's a certain uh, you know somewhat watered down version of shag carpet bathroom wall man <laughs> like at what point in the Goulet family tree was there just an absolute lunatic that just bought all the things he could buy and applied them to absolutely everything he could apply them to? It's probably most of my lineage, honestly. I want to meet that man. I want to movie my, about that guy. My family is all like the French Canadian. Like they came over to New Canada in yeah. the mid 1600s. There's like, yeah, what the heck? I'll go over there. Yeah. Think of the kind of person that would do that. Just go to voluntarily go to this new world and then just like friggin' figure it out for 400 years. That's kind of amazing. And then eventually came down to America. Then I'm here. But like all, all like the, you know, early adopter curiosity, you know, let's slap something together. No, I can do it myself mentality. I think like, that's throughout my whole lineage. I know. It's I literally kinda, just, it's in my genes. I just, I want, I want like, I want there to be like a movie about colonial Goulet man and like all the <laughs> adventures he gets into. Be like, no, nah, no, nah, I can do that. I don't need to buy one of those. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how entertaining that would be to watch, but it's kind of my life. I could come up with something. I'll workshop <laughs> right, it a bit. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, what was the question about? Oh, yeah. Wood pens. Um, so, yeah. Wood. Mm, okay. Not the best material. So, what did I say? Strength and durability, stain, movement of wood, ambient weather, temperature, all these kind of things. Um, so, that said, honestly, I have I don't have that many wood pens. There's not even that many wood pens, really, that I could kind of think of. Like, we, yeah. have, a, we yeah. have a few pens that we've done that have been like maybe out of some different wood materials. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the actual pens themselves, there's not that many. I don't have any. Like Faber-Castell's done some, none of which I've been crazy about. You know what wood I really did like? We haven't sold this in a very long time, but the Lamy Accent, remember that? Yeah. Where it's got like this grip, non-matching grip. That's, um, that's slightly bulgy. That's slightly bulgy. Ugh, just, I hate it. just enough to really accent how steep the step is down to the nib, mm -hmm. um, that pen. But they had one called Briarwood. Brilliant so like, Briarwood, if I brilliant, recall. Brilliant, that's right. Yeah. It was brilliant. But it was like a kind of a burly, grainy kind of wood. And I was like, that's probably the nicest looking wood I've seen on a pen in a long that time. Nice. Since I made pens. Um, but um, the two that I have that I think I like the most is the, of course, Delta Amalfi. Oh. Which is that weird one, which is olive wood. So, okay, you whatever you say about that pen, olive wood is a great material for a pen. Like that wood in particular is one that does pretty well on a pen. It's a very dense wood. It's very oily. Um, you know, it wears well. It patinas over time as you kind of touch it with your hand and you get those hand oils on there. Um, so olive wood, I think, is one wood that, that really holds up well. Um, the other one uh, we've had, so we've done like a bunch of Conklin woods. There's yeah. been several They've pens. definitely done more than most companies. Yes, they've leaned into that, which is cool. And that I think that's good. But, you know, it's again, it's wood pens. And those ones have been like more kind of solid wood throughout. Mm -hmm. um, but the one I liked the most was the Conklin All-American. They did a rosewood. And it's just, it's the deep, rich, 
you know, kind of yeah. wood. So it's like a darker wood. I mean, we've done other ones like walnut and stuff like that, but like this is an even deeper, richer. I don't think they did very many of it. It was like a limited edition of, I think, 398. Oh, wow. But I have one of those and I really like that wood. And nice. it's like you basically have the clip and then you have the grip of the pen with a nib that are, you know, not wood. But the whole rest of the body of the pen is just continuous wood. So you don't have like center band and fitting and all that kind of stuff. And just construction wise, that's a better way to do it out of wood because you're not dealing with as many dissimilar materials that can like. Fewer variables. Yeah, fewer variables and stuff like that. Um, but then it's just, you know, you just get to see more of that kind of continuous wood. So that one is probably one of my favorites aside from the pens that I used to make because I could pick whatever woods I liked. Yeah. The pens sucked, but the wood was amazing <laughs> out of those. And that's where I'm going to cut myself off on this question. I could go on and on about which woods would make good pens. I will say, but I'm not going to. One pen on that I wanted to, I had to look it up because I wanted to say it properly. The Sailor Kabazaiku pen. Okay, yes. That I, is I a about that one. stunningly beautiful that. pen. That one's interesting. That one's made out of the bark. Yeah. But it's, it's like, like cherry, cherry bark, right? It is, but I think it's it's got to be like stabilized. Oh, it's or out of stock. Infused with some oh, kind of man, resin. Look, it's, I wonder if we're getting any, getting any more in. That's yeah, cherry question. bark. Yeah. So that one is like, I like that one. And it's very interesting. It's so pretty. It is. It is pretty. But that why, one. Why, why does it sound like you have an asterisk next to your comments, Brian? You like that one, but. Well, the bark is less stable. So like they've, they've beautiful. obviously done, they've obviously done a bunch of stuff to it. And it's like a matte finish. I don't know. I do. I do like it's that gorgeous. one. I do like it's it. It's so pretty. I do like it. I, have, I do have, I have one of those. You do? Yeah. I kind of forgot about it. Though. Oh, good. So yeah. That, but, add that one to my list too. I really I yeah, like that one a it's lot. It's a stunner. Well, and it's really Sailor is. too. So like the quality yeah. of it. Like the, the Conklin All American is good, but it's not, you know, yeah. like the nib and stuff. It like it writes well, but it's not the same. All right, because Sailor. we haven't spent enough time on this topic, I'm going to ask you <laughs> if you could, I'm, I'm guessing if you could have, I know that Amboina Burl is your favorite wood. It is. If yes. you could have an Amboina Burl pen of any existing pen model, what pen model would you create out of your Amboina Burl wood? Oh boy, that's a tough question. Cause you could go with like, what's the biggest, most freaking gigantic pen you could get your yeah, hands on like if you wanted Sailor like a- King of Pens Or like a, a Emperor, thing. would you just want a freaking mm. log with a Namiki mm, nib on it? Or would you would, want something with a little bit more- Yeah, Emperor would be pretty amazing. <laughs> that's a baseball bat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That that wood just looks more amazing the more of it you see. So you're gonna go with a big pen? I think it will go with Emperor. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> I was joking. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not joking at all. That would look amazing. <laughs> and to be clear, like Amboina Burl, I actually researched this a little bit. Amboina is not like one wood type. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a class of woods. Burl is like when you have like a wart or a tumor yeah. or like some kind of growth, but you get this intense swirly grain. But Amboina, it's basically like a class of woods that are in the uh, Pterocarpus genus, if you're familiar with that, you mm. know, in case you're confusing it with any other El genus that might be out there. So sometimes I'm just like Nara or Burma Paduk, um, but it's, it could be a, a couple of different trees that are kind of in that whatever realm, but they're it's very expensive wood. They like. Well, we're just snapping. This is just a hypothetical. We're just snapping our fingers, you yeah, know. I would, but you're going. You're going with I the ge that. most gigantic pen you can think of. Yes. Okay. Yes. All Especially because right. like that pen, I don't know. It like fits the like natural vibe. I think of Namiki pens, and they're like much more kind of close to nature. And you get the yo man a Yurushi lacquer oh, over top of that <laughs> Amboina burl. All mm. right, there you go. You got your dream pen. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's hitting the right spots there. Plus that. All right. Big, that freaking gigantic nib. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would do that. Okay. Except it's on the nib, I wouldn't want to imprint of like a tree or something. That would be pretty sweet. A tree imprint would look pretty cool. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. like Lord of the Rings tree of Gondor, but you know, I, I think you I'm could- thinking more of like a real tree? Like a fluffy tree or a bear tree? Uh, that would be the question. I think a bear tree would like, you know, come across more in an engraving, mm. but- Okay. You can, do, you can go fluffy. You might go just look like, might look like broccoli. I won't, I won't be picky. I'll take either one. That's true. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's make it out of Amboina Burl. Two-tone Amboina Burl. You got to have a lot of sapwood in there. Of course. It's very high contrast. It would look amazing. Definitely. Whew. Mm. Yes. That. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, I got a question for you, Drew. From, yes. From Hill Ari. There's like seven underscores there in the middle. Oh, yeah. Um, what's something unique to working at a pen company for example, no nibs, in, no nibs in the sink signs. So like what quirky things do we have around here that are kind of no, maybe normal to us, but then 
we tell like our friends or family about this kind of stuff and they're like, well, that's pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are definitely a couple. I will say, Hill, Ari, that we're okay with nibs in some sinks. Uh, we do have a mm-hmm. pen cleaning pair of sinks that is that are dedicated to pen cleaning and it's got that's where all of our cleaning supplies are bulb syringes syringes multitudinous hand cleansing supplies yes but we have you know very fine mesh drain protectors on Mm -hmm. those so we can still do what we need to do and nothing is going to go down the sink and um, if it does we can access the p-traps we'll be fine Um, those are probably the only sinks that would be allowed to you know, have nibs loose in if you had to. I wouldn't um, recommend it on the other sinks. Yeah, no, definitely know? wouldn't recommend it. But uh, yeah, we do, we have thought about that. Um, I, you know, there's plenty of decor around the place. When you first walk in, there's a gigantic mm. stainless steel nib that's about eight feet tall. So yep. there's that. That's pretty unique to a fountain pen, you know, yep. office. We have glass doors with translucent ink and water yeah, when you write when, when you wall. walk in you're just you're met with a giant nib and you see a conference room that's you know covered with ink basically yeah, basically covered in ink on all of that's the kind glass. of unique you don't I see would that say in so. most office places i yeah. would say so for a while uh, we have had a uh, freebie table of random stuff uh that has been just you know up for grabs either they're samples of stuff we don't carry anymore, promotional items, little pins and knickknacks and mm-hmm. things like that that anybody can just come and grab. So uh, if you wanted we to- might rent- have like overstock of something we found that's like three years ago. Yeah, or like bit. we got a return on something we don't carry anymore. Mm-hmm. And you know, we'll just put it on the freebie table and I people Give it out can, to our team, yeah. Yeah, so there's that. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to, so that's just kind of like a pile of random <laughs> accessories. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes there's a legit pin there, but mm-hmm. um, that's always a, a fixture in our yeah. meeting area. Uh, there's obviously lots of pen photography all around the office. Lots of yeah. lo- very large prints of fountain pens. Mm-hmm. One, my favorite, is actually an image of a fountain pen that actually has real ink splattered all over it. That's right. Um, from our ink sampling room. And uh, there was a bit of a mishap one day and it added quite a bit of charm <laughs> to an already charming image. So yes. we kept it up. It's still there. Yep. It's splattered with black ink and uh, <laughs> it makes a little bit of a statement. So that definitely is there. I'd say that's probably the most unique, like random thing that would only be seen at a fountain pen retailer's office. A big yeah. picture of a fountain pen with actual fountain pen ink just <laughs> splattered all over splattered it. All over it. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's probably my number one pick. If I had to pick mm-hmm. one, that's the one that's coming to mind. It's pretty good. Um, when Brian and Rachel had this place all you know, fixed up because it was an empty, bare, sad skeleton of a warehouse slash office building when we moved in or before we moved in. They elected to carpet everything using carpet squares so that they could Mm -hmm. be easily replaced in the event that uh, some sort of inky mishap occurred. And as of right now, I don't think we've had to do that yet. We haven't had to replace it. Like we've been yet. cleaning, we've we've cleaned, but we I don't know. Clean the we've... carpets on a regular basis. There are there are ones we probably could replace because yeah. there, there's some ink. It's more like if there was actual damage to the tiles. Yeah. That we would do. Yeah. Yeah. So there's definitely some some inky messes. That wouldn't be terrible. But we mm-hmm. have that versatility. So we were ready for the inky messes and damage. That's right. Um and uh then a couple more that Brian wrote down here, and I'll let you cover. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the pen cleaning station. That is one thing that I always kind of point out to visitors is like- Pretty unique. I don't know. Yeah, when we were having the building kind of renovated, constructed, whatever, our contractor was like, you're doing a what now? Yeah. We were like, we need a a pen cleaning station. They're like, this is literally the only one we have ever made and probably will ever make. And I was like, darn tootin'. Probably. That's what we're doing. Um, yeah, and like everything in that pen cleaning station, basically the ultrasonic cleaner, all that kind of stuff. It's just right like there, a lot of yeah. weird stuff there for cleaning pens. Um, I said it's not unusual for syringe- syringes to just be laying around everywhere around the office. That's something that might freak somebody That's else probably out. Probably unusual for most office spaces. Yeah, they're now, blunt tip. These okay. are ink syringes. They're blunt tip, but they're kind of just like on most desks. Most, most desks. Yeah. Most places around here, you're gonna see. You're gonna see just syringes laying around, and it's not weird. Um, and then just. Drew kind of mentioned just lots of ink stains on the floor, carpets, walls, artwork, hands, you name it, (laughs) clothes sometimes because we're just messing with pens all the time. Um, And another thing is we have padded warehouse floors. Oh, yeah. So this is kind of unique, you know, because we sell a lot of basically small items. We don't have to have like forklifts and stuff like that. Um, So we 
it's basically just walking around. We don't even really use ladders very much. Like we try to keep everything within reaching distance. Yeah. Um, so that right there from most companies is kind of weird because most people sell bigger stuff and you have to have equipment and stuff to move it all around. Um, but we, you know, it's kind of nice. We don't have to do all that. Um, it's and, good for feet too. Yeah. It's good for feet. It's definitely great for comfort, um, but it's also good for, you know, we sell notebooks that can bend and be damaged. We sell pens that are expensive and uh, glass bottles that can break. So all things that have dropped on hard concrete floors are generally pretty bad. So it's also a bonus to have the floors padded so that we don't damage any products that we might happen to drop. So yeah, that's a pretty interesting thing that usually people come and visit here are like, oh, this is like a really comfortable warehouse. Cause like we have really good lighting. We have some warehouse doors we replace with ones that have windows for natural light. Heated and air conditioned. It's heated and air conditioned, yeah. And padded floors. It's like, yeah, this is pretty pretty great for a warehouse setup. So yeah, that's all kind of weird stuff that we yeah, do. I think that just about covers it. I don't know. It's it's hard for me to We're so accustomed to it. Yeah, I don't even it's know hard what for me we, to walk in and not yeah. feel like everything is totally normal. Yeah. Cause it's you know, this is I think by lot, far the longest job you and I have ever had. So Oh yeah, for sure. I think a lot of the like lingo that we throw around too, just product names and and shorthand things that we just use to talk, that's pretty specific and kind of weird. And uh, every now and then we'll either be on Slack typing something out or we'll just say something in a meeting and I'm like, that's just a really strange sentence if you take yourself out of the context of this place. I can't think of a specific example that comes oh, to mind. it happens daily though. But yeah, for yeah. sure. Just combinations of things. Not even innuendo necessarily, though certainly there's a lot of- Yeah, I will say the most impressive thing is not, is, is at some point not laughing at all of the innuendo that still yeah. happens. You know, it still yeah. happens every now and then, but you do get used to it eventually. Yeah. It takes years. Yeah, but yeah. There you go. Good question. All right. All right, next one. Next one comes to us from Unapologetic Leah. And uh, I just asked, hey, what should we talk about? And uh, Leah says, we should talk about the anniversary edition of the Pilot Vanishing Point. So they just announced yeah. what the 2023 annual edition of the VP is going to look like. And uh, yeah, I figured we could talk about that and maybe talk about just annual editions in general. I what do you think about the new pen, Brian? I haven't seen it in person yet. Right. I've only seen pictures. Correct. I think it's not releasing until October. So, you know, but at least from looking at the picture, I can tell it's going to be a very intense looking color like kind of shimmery you know they've done some finishes like that before bright bright um, red bright red yeah which but they, with uh they did a red pen last year but this so one's got matte black uh hardware i do like that the yeah. black and red thing is is cool i do yeah, cool. i like that better than the red and silver not that there's anything Definitely. wrong with that but um but the red seems like a brighter like excuse me, more intense red. Because last, mm -hmm. last year's was the coral red. Yeah, and it wasn't so it was a really orangey. coral. It was definitely more red than coral. Yeah, yeah. So it did surprise me that they picked another shade of red. Yeah, a little bit. But this was this is an anniversary one. So I think they kind of just went out of, they weren't really worried about what they did in the last couple of yeah. years. It was just like, what is meaningful? And there might be more to the story of the red. Yeah, no, there's a whole that press just, release that yeah. talks about the meaning behind the red and the black motif that they chose. So yeah. there's definitely meaning there for sure. Yeah, thoughtful. I don't remember what that meaning is exactly, but even I, I remember there bits is meaning and pieces, to be but I'm not going to risk repeating it because yeah. I'm too ignorant. Um, so with these, with these special pens, they always do whatever the year is. That's how many of the pens they make. So they're going to be two of 2023 of these, and they engrave the number on the center band of these pens too, which is pretty cool. And they always do like a special gift gift box, gift packaging and stuff. That's part of why these ones cost a little more is because they have some of these extra touches. And they're meant to be, you know, a little more collectible. Like these are probably not the pens that you're going to want to use as like your everyday carry pens, though you certainly could. Um, I remember when they did the 50th anniversary pen, we were selling Pilot at that point. It's like, wow, I remember which now. Which one like, was that? Um, that one was a wood pen. Oh yeah. So um, it was, but oh, it was like a, wood. it was a light wood and it's like barely had a finish on it. So it's, it was, it's, it was physically very light too. I remember. It was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was an attractive pen, but that was very different. It was yeah. like, oh, it's a totally different material. I don't think, I don't think they've done a non metal pen since then either. So that, I mean, 50, 50 is a big anniversary. So this yeah. one's not as wild, but I don't know. I dig the red. I'm, I'm not a huge red pen guy. No, but red personally. and black red is and cool. a, it does Like good. red in general doesn't really do it for me, but red and black, <clears> it's <throat> like, oh, 
It's okay. like Darth Maul kind of a yeah, look. Yeah, she definitely has some Sith mm, vibes. Yeah, strong Sith vibes. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I've been basically ever since we started selling Vanishing Points, I've been keeping one of every there you go. special edition. Do you have a, bl- uh, a white and black one? A white and black one. Oh, like the... That's not like a special edition. No. It's just the regular. I don't know that I kept one because of those. Because if you have one of those with this pen, you've got the makings of the Empire. Hey, now you're talking. I, that's how I think. Food for thought right there. Um, yeah, so we've had some other cool looking ones. The Coral Red was last year. That one was okay. It wasn't my favorite. Um, Black Ice 2021. That one was cool. I, I love the ombre yeah. kind of colored ones. Um, the Link Black from 2020. There's a lot going on in 2020, so that one got overlooked a little bit. It did. But, um, 2019 Tropical Turquoise. That one I liked. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's turquoise. It's a, you know close to blue. Um, 2018 Crossed Lines. Yeah, that one I could take or leave. Yeah. Uh, 2017 Crimson Sunrise. Now we're talking. That's a ni- that's a nice looking red, but it had this like, ombre color. Um, then we had the 2016 Guilloche. I think that's why I wasn't quite as crazy about the Link Black. I mean, it was nice, but it was so yeah. close to the Guilloche. It was. Um, the uh, the Guilloche, I think, is my favorite. Uh, really? Yeah. I don't like the loud ones. Really? No, I don't. I see. I like. I do like the loud ones. It's just, I, I really, not a, most of my pens are not like, I, I, I go with the more subtle pens, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I like, because it was really textured and it looked, to me, the Vanishing yeah. Point is a very sleek, and uh, streamlined pen. Okay. And the really, I don't want to say so gar- the, garish. The but loud colors. The like loud colors. Away I just, from that for I you? just don't think that they fit with the style of the pen's body. Kind of like the two thousand. Like it just hmm. wouldn't. It just wouldn't work. The two thousand is a. I don't know. I'd like to see them try. It's got its own personality, and <laughs> I think that that personality is a little bit more sleek and streamlined. It looks like, you know, uh, mid-century sort of, I don't know. I, I think of it more of like... Yeah, I, I get, kind of get what you're saying. Yeah, it's tough. Um, that's why I think the yellow one looks great. I think that it just, it fits more with The yellow that, one is like the loudest of all the colors. But it fits with kind of the mid-century styling of that, okay, fair. Act, of the actual, you know, pen shape and aesthetic. Okay. okay. Um, so I don't know. I know I'm splitting hairs, but that's why that's why I like the guilloche. I think it's it's still professional. Yeah. It, I think it works with the design and the profile. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But no doubt the ombre ones have been the most popular. Yeah. Like the 2015 one, Twilight. Oh, is, there we go. We're here already. By yeah, far, that one, that my one favorite. Destroyed. That one is by far my favorite. Yeah. That they've done. That one has to, like that has to be the most popular special edition we've ever had, right? It was for us. But it's hard to say because, like, we don't always get the same quantity every yeah, year and all true. that kind of stuff. And, you know, it varies a lot. I know. Like, that was an event. That Twilight one didn't sell as well in Europe. Oh, really? But, like, oh, the, yeah. the Guiche and, like, the Cross Lines and stuff, those yeah. are more popular in Europe. So it really just depends on the region, I think. I didn't like the Cross Lines as much as the Guiche because they didn't, they didn't line, line up. up. Yeah. Always line up. Sometimes I, they did. I would like. Not always. And I don't, rec- I don't recall if the, if the Cross Lines had been etched and filled. I think I would have liked it more, but I think they were just drawn on there. I think it was just like a wrap. I don't think they were etched. I don't think there was, I don't think there was a, I I remember feeling, I don't recall there being a texture to the lines. I could be wrong. I don't know. I'll have to check after this. I'll go in your office. I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know how they do all those. Like, I mean, I know, I know all the ombre ones. It's like lacquered. Like those are actual layers of paint that they Oh, it's you not know, a wrap? Apply to that. No, it's not oh, a wrap. Oh, wow. Okay, that yeah, makes it cooler. I remember, I remember when they came out with the Twilight, because I think that was the first ombre one that they had done. Mm-hmm. Maybe ever. I'm not sure. Um, but they had somewhere, I don't remember where I saw this, but it was basically like each step of the process as they were making it. So it showed them starting off with, I think it was like the blue and then it showed them like adding layers of the purple onto it. I think it was like nine coats or something. That's they had impressive. To do. Okay. Yeah. So it's like extra points. I don't know exactly. I don't know how like the tropical turquoise one and then the charcoal marble. That one was the one from 2012. I don't know how those were done. Cause that's like a webbing sort of material on there. I don't know if that was a wrap. But I can't if it is, if it is a wrap, it's a really good one because you can't see any lines anywhere. That's true. That you would normally see on a wrap. 
But I mean, Retro Fifty One's kind of like that. Those pins are wrapped sometimes, most of the time. Yeah, and I, you you can't you can't, you can't see the seam. Little, the you can seam. just sometimes yeah. see like a little gap in the pattern. Yeah. Um. So, but I don't know. It's I don't know how they do those webbed ones. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not a wrap and it's some method they came up with for painting it that way. You know. So that's that's sometimes why these are a little more expensive. She said too. the Twilight was 2015. 2015. 2014 was the copper, and that was just like bright, like a bright copper. Mm -hmm. 2013 was the 50th anniversary. So that was that the, wood, was the one. wood one. Yeah. Yeah. Charcoal marble was 2012, and then 2011 was pink, and that thing was hot. That was our first one, right? That was our first one. Yeah. We were just like, heck yeah, let's get Did some we, of these. Didn't we get like four of them? We got like a handful. It was of, not many. We they, Initially, they didn't give us any. Because they were like, well, we only, you know, we allot it based on what people have gotten previously. And we're like, well, we've never had them right. before. How are we ever going to get any if you don't give us a shot? Yeah. That was Rachel. I remember Rachel that. I remember, that I remember they were they were on the, uh, one of those steel racks that the ink samples were on down at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember that. And we kept one of them too. So <laughs> we nice. might've gotten a couple more, but it was like very, very few of them. Nice. That was like our foot in the door. And it was like, okay. We'll keep doing this thing. So, and there were others before that too. That was just like I will the ones say, that we yeah, had. like to, to to tease everybody. If you're curious about the ones that came prior to 20, 2011, we actually have them featured uh, on our blog. If you didn't mm -hmm. know we had a blog, we do. If you hadn't, if you haven't been there in a number of years, go check it out because it has been completely given a facelift and yeah. it looks a lot better. It's much more easy to navigate. And on there, right at the front page, if you go to the very bottom of our website. There's a blog button. Click on that. There will be a link that will take you to something called Special Edition History, mm -hmm. where you can see not only the Special Edition History of the Vanishing Point and check out pre-2011 editions, but you can see ones from the Edison Nouveau Premiere. You can see ones from you know Twisby Eco stuff and uh, Lamy Safari Special Editions, Lamy All-Star Special Editions. It's all there, and it's a lot of fun to kind of take a trip down memory lane, or in this case, take a trip down someone else's memory because we don't, have any experience pre 2011 so right there are some older ones that if you look at all the older ones like pre 2011 you're like oh these are some kind of stock looking they're pretty pictures. basic it's like purple that's because they're stock images yeah we didn't have those pens oh yet. well even even the designs are pretty flat yeah like they didn't start getting they got crazy more, they until, got more yeah twilight yeah. was the one that really kicked it off I was, I was like, yeah i mean whoa. even charcoal charcoal marble was the first like one that just yeah. wasn't a flat color I think. yeah i think so so but anyway go check it out it's definitely worth a look. Yeah, done some good stuff. So as far as like this particular pen, you know, I can't really judge it until I see it in person. Yeah. But I think from looking at the pictures, it's going to look impressive in person. But it's not going to be for everybody. But I think it's like, it's one of those things that's going to be kind of collectible. Just like if a wood pen's not your thing, for the 50th anniversary, it's like, okay, but it's the 50th anniversary, you know? So this will be more notable because it's like one of their year yeah, and we'll like definitely, marked anniversaries. We'll definitely cover it more in detail when we actually yeah. get it in hand we got a few months. and we'll talk about the history yeah. about it and everything like mm -hmm. that. You know, right now it's still pretty new to us, but definitely. Yeah. Cool. There we go. All right. This question is from awful gold. Is there a currently trending slash popular product on the Goulet pen company team? If so, what is it? What are the pens that the pen people are buzzing about, Drew? I didn't have an answer to this, Brian. What? But luckily, no, I'm with you. I didn't either. I went and I went and asked some people. Okay. So there's nothing uh, like jumped out at us as like, oh, everybody's well, actually, talking about this. Actually, yes. Well, in retrospect, I should have known. Okay. But you know, it wasn't until I actually asked him, like, oh yeah, of course, I know you guys have been talking about this. But that's yeah, a Goulet feed brush, right? Before, everybody's buzzing about that. No, you know what I said? I said other. Than the Droule feed brush. <laughs> what is what are you super jiving with right now? Okay. So before I get to the one that they're absolutely most hyped about, I'm going to cover um, willingly. They asked. They just told me what they're using right now, and I know that okay. uh, previously people have asked what what's the customer care using right now. So yeah. um, Jessica currently is using. Uh, she's recently the owner of an ice caramel latte from Banu, and she has actually inked that one up with Culliver's Coffee Break. So oh, nice. perfect pairing matchy, from Jessica. Matchy. Um, and she's also pretty into her E95S with Roarer and Cleaner Cassia. So that's an ink I don't think I have ever used. I know it's a popular one. It's a nice one. That's one of the- uh, um, Iron Gall? Iron Gall I thought that right. was just Salix and Scabiosa. Well, this is like the platinum or the, uh, the classic line, which was like more Iron Gall, I believe. No, sorry, Roarer and Cleaner. No, no, no. You're, You're thinking platinum. 
I'm mixing it up. Yeah, yeah platinum. Sorry. We'll get to no. that later. Someone no, else is Cassie, using those. I don't think Cassie is an iron goal. Okay, gotcha. No. Um, and she's also been using uh, Ferris Wheel Press Tumbling Time Blue. Mm. Um, Ethan, meanwhile, is all about some Diamine Bliss, which I think is from their newest uh, green edition um, okay. of uh, inks. I'm not as familiar with them. And then that he has in his uh, Sailor Pro Gear uh, Sasa. Mm. And then um, he actually got his girlfriend the Banu Lavender pen. So she's been super into that nice. and uh, using Diatromentus Elderberry in there. So we're just all all purple. Elderberry, then, uh, not elderberry. Correct, correct. Um, it used to be elderberries. Now it's just one. The only one berry now. Yep. <laughs> uh, Brian K is using a custom 912 FA with Sailor Hana Gokoro. Mm. And Adrian. Good combo. Another Banu Sangria this time. Okay. Um, with Platinum Classic Lavender Black. There you go. That's the that's the iron gold one yep. Yep, on the plastic yep. one, and those are fun because they go down one color and then quickly kind of dry a different up. color. Yeah, yeah, they're fun. Yeah. They're fun inks, and they're not harmful to pens. Like I've never had a problem with flow on those yeah. pens. I'm kind of saying Banu is a trend here. Dude, we've got at least uh, amongst our customer care. We've team. got three three Banu pens happening. So yeah, that's definitely a lot of goodness. Um, it is. It is, and it, and it's funny because a lot of us had started off saying, "I get the appeal of Banu, but it's not for me," and eventually. It gets you. Eventually, yeah. you become a Banu owner because, yeah. like Retro Fifty One, eventually one comes along because they just come out with so many. The the variety is staggering, and they're so, so unique. To eventually, their they're going to get one that hits your bullseye. Yeah, you know, they're it's either going to be so far outside your bullseye you could not care less, mm -hmm. or it's going to be directly in the middle. And yeah. You're going to be like, well, darn it, I have to buy it now. Yeah. Um, but the thing that they're most excited about, and the thing that is absolutely on the top of everybody's mind, is a new ink brand, actually. And I talked to Rachel about this. We can talk to talk about it because she's putting it on the website okay. um, on Wednesday. So we're all good. Cool. But we are going to be carrying Wearing Goal inks. And uh, that's cool. That's exciting. They're coming from South Korea. The thing that the customer care team's most excited about, though, which is kind of odd because this might actually cause some customer, you know, problems. But as <laughs> users and fountain pen nerds, they are excited about the glitter potions that are going to be included in that line and ones that we are going to carry on the website, which, if you didn't know, Brian, are just sh it's basically just shimmer juice that you can yeah. add to any ink <laughs> shimmer to, juice that's, to, a, to that's turn, a good way to describe yeah it. it's shimmer juice you yeah. just add shimmer juice to whatever ink you would like to shimmify and you can shimmerize it shimmerize yeah. it yep shimmerferate it it's like the glit um, it's like the, the glitterator the glitterator remember that from the 90s no it was just you and your brother you didn't have a sister no so i was more familiar you had with the glitterator, glitterator. yeah makes me there's a whole the song terminator. to glitterator the glitterator glitter it a lot Glitter oh. it cool. Glitter it hot. Oh my. Yeah. Is that like a bedazzler? Like a, kind of. Yeah. But it was basically like you would put objects into this like little tumbler. You'd like basically kind of spray like some glue or something on it. Oh my god. And you would just tumble it with glitter and it just put glitter all over whatever thing you oh wanted to do. Oh my god. Yeah. So you just you add glitter to literally everything in your life. Oh and wow. I bet as that a, wasn't as a parent, as a parent, I'm just like, oh my gosh. I would never want to buy that. No. Oh geez, no. <laughs> oh yeah. Ellie loves glitter. She wants to put glitter everywhere. Yeah. I currently have glitter on my car, like the seats on my car that I can't remove. Oh. There's glitter in like the cracks and like the wood flooring. And that's interesting because I've like, never seen glitter on you in here. No, usually no, I've like ended up with glitter on my person. Well, she's she's it gets she's everywhere. eleven now, so okay. she's a little more a little better about it, a little more careful about it now. When we okay. when it was younger, yeah, there was glitter okay. happening just kind of everywhere. Gotcha. I mean, I'm used to that. It's like me with dog hair. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just kind of get used to it. And you I, I try. I just tried to to get on the floor yesterday to get the remote out from the couch, and I walked oh, over. Boy. I moved the side <laughs> table away. I'm like, Ooh. nope, not getting down there. So I started vacuuming. Okay, and then I'm like, all right, now I can get the thing from out of the couch. Nice. It's just like three times a week I have yeah. to do that. It's, it's, it's maddening. Anyway, yeah, glitter potions. Everybody's <laughs> super excited about it because even even though someone is going to say, yeah, I dumped the whole bottle into my. Ink sample. Why is my <laughs> pen not flowing? Um, and they're going to have to deal with that. They're still, nonetheless, very excited. As users of the product, they're very eager to start putting some glitter juice into their inks. Fun. When we were experimenting with the brand, I got the opportunity to really play with stuff. I added every all four colors of shimmer to buttered popcorn. Of course, that was the first thing I did. All four I, at once? No, no, no. Like I needed separate a, ones. Butter popcorn was my control, Brian. Oh, and you wanted to see so, which glitter potion brought the best right. out of the. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which one won? 
Oh, was your, I, I, was I, 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 it was for demonstration purposes, so I could show the team, like, hey, should we carry all four of these? Okay. And I like one was of them is called standout? one of them is called Frost. One of them is called Fr uh, uh, Flame. One of them is I forget what the other two are called. But anyway, I was like, all right, this one's Freezy Pop because popcorn. <laughs> this one's you know Hot Pop. <laughs> Nice. I came up. I came up with names for all of them, but that's a fun yeah. thing you can do. If you get glimmer potion, you can create mm -hmm. your own fun names for what you upgrade. But I did nice. put some in base state blue. I did put some in nitrogen. Oh, just because. Oh, okay. I wanted to just make Why difficult not? inks more difficult. It's an agent of chaos. Yes. Yeah. Did so, it help or did it? Was it just more? I don't know. I didn't actually put them inside fountain pens. As, as my kids would say, it was just extra. Oh, very extra. I mean, those inks are already yes. extra. Yeah. But no, I was just using a, a, a Kakamori. <laughs> nib so nice i didn't actually okay. test flow okay. i'm gonna leave that up to our uh darling customers mm, that'll be that. maybe so. that's why yeah <laughs> that's why our team's excited but anyway yeah so. that is what they're currently jazzed about cool what are you jazzed about let me yeah. know i just inked up yesterday I inked up a um diplomat arrow um it was like the turquoise one it was an exclusive that we had the name fails me but it's like a bright turquoise almost the color of the uh Iguana blue. Turkey Turk. Not quite as green as that one, but similar that like, I don't know. I was just, I think I was going through my pens yesterday looking for like the wood pens, just trying to remind myself, myself what there was. And I saw that pen there. I was like, mm, make that up. Nice. What'd you I, use? I did uh, Ferris World Press Tumultuous Tides. Oh, look at you like branching out. Not glittery, using blue water ice. turquoise. I know, right? Very nice. I used a different turquoise. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it like matched the pen really well. And I nice. was like, yeah, this is... This is cool. So that was fun. That's my latest inking up. Very wow. cool. All right, we're gonna finish things off with Zoom Pen. Mm. And this is a really fun one, Brian. Zoom says, if we could have any pen in a different filling mechanism, which pen would it be and which filling mechanism would it be? That's a good question. Yeah, do we, so I'm thinking you want like a rollerball on an emperor, right? Oh my gosh. A rollerball that takes fountain pen ink. They on literally a, don't make a rollerball emperor. It's on an, only fountain pen. On an emperor, yeah. So that's what you would want though, right? You're gonna change it? Change oh, it up no, to yeah. a ballpoint, ballpoint emperor? <sighs> nice pasty <sighs> big ballpoint. No, I think I would want a uh, refillable rollerball. Put a big crystal refill emperor. inside of an emperor. <laughs> oh, my gosh. oh my gosh. What a delightful that's terrible. writing experience. It's terrible. <laughs> Why would you do that? Oh my gosh. Um no, that's like pedaling a Ferrari, like like a bicycle. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> um, no, I said that. Or even uh, better, like just cut the bottom out and you know Fred like Flintstone, Flintstone it. it. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. That would that's what it would be like, like a like a cozy coupe Ferrari. Mm. Um, okay, I said a Sailor King of pens with a piston filler. Oh man, because that's a big pen. That's a lot of capacity. It's a lot of capacity. Ooh. That's what I would want. Or vacuum, either way. But just it, you know that. When you open up that pen and you look at just how hardy mm -hmm. the whole like grip section and, and it's got like this that big this metal like shroud cage it's yeah. like this this shrine for this converter that you have to stick in there it makes it look and it covers small. the entire converter so you can't even see what the ink level is yeah. even once you open up the pen there's like a weird little cutout in the middle of that funky shroud thing yeah, you, you can't really no. see the ink level with that though no all that does is make it so that when you go to flush it with a bulb syringe, you can't use a bulb syringe. You gotta like yeah. try to hold it with your fingers yeah. and you're into this like whole dance. But what I ended up doing is I have, I have a different bulb syringe that I cut, you know, for like pilots and sailors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I just go outside yep. and I just like just latch it onto there. And there you go. That works really well. That does work. So yeah, a, a big pen like that feels like it needs yeah. a high ink capacity. I get that, I get so that. that, that that's one that I would do. Plus, I like the king of pens with the broad nib, which is a little thirstier than some Quite. of the other nib sizes. So that would be uh, that would be appropriate. Um, the other one I had, I I do love that coned bulk filler. Mm, of course, you could pretty much take that and put it on basically Maybe. anything, yeah. and that would be awesome. Throw it on a two thousand, throw it on a, you know whatever. But I said a tool pen. pen. Sure, why not? Literally any pen, it would enhance it. Um, but uh, I chose a Pilot Custom 823. But I, I like the vacuum on the 823. Mm -hmm. It's not that I hate it, but I don't know. The bulk fill is just really cool, and I like that too. So, yeah, I, I can know. I can see that. It's already it's not got that the, it's, not that much of a reach. It's already got the knob there. Yeah, yeah, Why not? yeah. And I was trying to think of other ones, but it's like I don't know. I just 
I don't find myself often pining for a different filling mechanism on whatever the pen that I'm using. I do. I don't know if I just don't have as much of an imagination or if I'm just like, well, this is the pen. This is what it is. I will accept it and love it for who it is. Mm, no, not I'm me. I'm not trying to make it. <laughs> you're a not little more me. judgmental with your pens. Absolutely. I'm going to I'm gonna downgrade a couple pens. You maybe ready? I'll th- maybe I'll think of some as you're talking here, but probably not because you're going to be Lamy 2000 stupid. cartridge converter. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah, man. How is that an upgrade? I don't need a. I don't need a piston. I love the look of the two thousand. Okay. I don't. I, I don't need a piston. I, I. You can't see it when it's totally clean. You can't disassemble the piston. That okay. I. I. I would much rather. I would have, like to be able to do that. Yeah. I, so why not? Cartridge yeah. converter. Maybe and I wouldn't it, change it. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change the Lamy two thousand from a piston. I would just make it so that it's removable. No, cartridge converter everything. Cartridge converter Homo sapiens, cartridge converter Lamy 2000, just... cartridge converter Twisby Eco. True. That's what I want. <laughs> Literally, you're not making any of these pens better. <laughs> they are better. All right. Think about the Twisby Eco. It is a 32 some dollar pen. Yeah. With this massive capacity. With a great piston it's a, mechanism. It's a, great, it's a great starter pen, but you can't even start with it without buying, you know, a freaking bottle of ink. So okay. why, if you made it a cartridge converter, or at least a different version of it, made it, made, made it a cartridge converter pen, it would be more affordable, and you could just get started with a cartridge if you wanted to. It would increase its accessibility. It's a great pen. The capping is fantastic. Like, that's one reason I like the swipe as much as I do, is because of its accessibility, its affordability, okay. and its versatility. Okay. Put that big honking Twisby swipe converter in the Eco, I like the eco better than the swipe at that point. You get the fun yeah, colors. But then you don't get to see the ink sloshing around. As it's much a big converter, like Brian. Yeah, but it's not the same. As it's not the same, the but that's fine. Hugging up against the, the body of the, the pen. The capacity of the eco is one of the few things that are appealing to that pen. Mm-hmm. The actual writing experience is excellent. You yeah. know, it seals yeah. amazingly well, okay. um, and you can still retain a solid bit of capacity if you use the Twisby converter that's in the swipe. Even just a different version, like yeah, you're not, if you yeah with that converter, you're not really sacrificing. It's a solid too converter. much on the ink, capacity. and you could still use the Twisby massive uh, cartridge if you wanted to just refill a cartridge. You could do that. Okay. I think it just I think that the Eco is such a great pen. I think that sometimes the piston mechanism is a detriment to its accessibility. That's I don't know, I don't know about that. That's one. my stance. I don't know about that. I one. feel like I have. I'm normally on Throw board. Pl- I'm normally on board. I have, there's plenty of I'm logic tough, here. I'm having a tough time getting plenty there. Plenty of logic. I mean, come one. on. I'm, I'm not making no sense. If I put my Drew hat on, then I'm like, I can see your logic to <laughs> it. But I'm having a hard time getting there I think it makes myself. perfect sense. And Homo sapiens, another thing. It's like vacuum fillers are such a pain. And a Homo sapiens is another one you can't disassemble. So you get the spritz. It's like that the light blue spritz you can't ever get rid of. Like, yeah, it's neat, it's novel, it's fun, but is it the most practical thing? Like, I do think you could replace the Homo sapiens with like a good piston and it wouldn't lose anything. I don't want a piston either. I just want a cartridge converter. Just give me the option. Like, that. that's fine. I don't need, you know, I've said this many times, I do not find capacity to be a benefit. I don't need to write for a yeah, long I'm time with, you. I'm with, you on with that. the same ink. I'm with you on that. So like when when I fill using a piston or a vac and it only fills halfway, I'm like, all right, that's fine. I don't even go, I don't even try to fill it all the way because I don't need it. I'm, I don't want to use all that ink. I'm ready for another, like I'm halfway through, I'm ready to swap it out for another ink already. I want to try something new. I, I feel you on that one. So cartridge converter is just better for me. For the way I experience the fountain pen hobby, I'm a rapid changer. I always want to try something different that the cartridge converter format is better for me in my fountain pen life than a piston or vac filler is. So naturally, Uh I would prefer to have these great pens, the 2000, the Eco, or the Homo Sapiens in a cartridge converter format. So are you like loving the Pilot 743 because it's basically a cartridge converter 823? No, because I already have a 912 and that's already better because it's flat top. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, boy. Okay. So, okay. yeah, but no, I am because you get the benefit because it is a very nice nib. All right. um, How do you feel about the Custom Heritage 92? No one cares about the 92, Brian. 
I thought you were like a fan of that. I you're like advocating for it because no one cares about it. Yeah, I, I am drawn to do that in the same way I'm drawn to advocate for Indiana Jones and the Kingdom what... of Crystal Skull. It doesn't mean I like it. It oh. just means that I feel like it needs a defender sometimes. Okay, that one too is a flat top. Maybe that's why you like that. It is, and and, and the piston is remarkably smooth and operates mm-hmm. yeah. beautifully. Yeah. Um, but would I ever choose that over something with a cartridge converter? Absolutely not. So your hot take is that you would make every pen a cartridge converter, just literally everything. Just eliminate all other filling mechanisms in your world. Mm. Like for your for your uses, is there anything that you wouldn't make a cartridge converter? That's a good question. Because that's kind of what it's sounding like. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, no, no, I I I don't think so. You know, wow. it's like. <clears throat> Even with how no, easy, no barrel fillings either. Apparently, well, I guess they. Oh could be God, converted. no! I they would, I would take a vac or a piston before barrel filling a pen. Really? No, that's nonsense. That's yeah, not you even. Ne- you never do that. No, God. I mean, unless you're counting like an Opus, which is made for it. But the barrel filling hack is what I'm just like. No, not not dealing okay. with that. It's Fair not enough. the Fair risk enough. is not worth the reward for me. Well, how about like an Opus 88? Would you make that something like cartridge converter? No, because the Opus 80, like the Opus 88, is built like for that reason like that well, that's the appeal of the opus every 88. pen is built for right. the mechanism that it has but the twisby eco for example has a lot more going for it other than just that filling mechanism like it looks oh, good wow. it feels good one it's of the a, most affordable pistons pens it is get. it is and I, and I don't want to take that from people but from my mm-hmm. experience like the opus 88 what is that getting me it's a massive chonker of a pen and mm-hmm. if you eliminate the eyedropper aspect or barrel filler aspect of it it's just you, you. You just got a massive chunk of clear plastic with a little tiny converter. So, plenty of pens are like that, though. Yeah. So I don't want to like mess with other people's enjoyment. But okay. if you said, "Hey, would you like to use? Would you like to have this Homo Sapiens, this Eco, and this Lamy Two Thousand that are all cartridge converter pens?" I would say, "Yes, I would like those." So you would like. You wouldn't want to well, you lim- want, I, eliminate other mechanisms. No, of course you just not. want every pen to be offered in a cartridge converter yes. format. Yes, and that would be your preference. Yes, and if you had, and if I did have those three, if I had an Eco, a Two Thousand, and a Homo Sapiens, I uh-huh. would use those three cartridge converter versions way more than their other versions for sure. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a pen that would make you go back on that but i mean the opus 88 is a good example like I, but then again i don't find that pen particularly like appealing your, yeah, anyway yeah. yeah um but no it just it just, it, it mm. complicates it for cleaning mm-hmm. and it the the supposed benefit is not a benefit to me personally so yeah for me it's just not 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 a thing that's fair yeah it's fair so All right. hot take if you think so but uh, for me it's just practicality fair enough all right Well, I'd love to hear what y'all's opinions are and how wrong you think Drew is (laughs) about his hot take. I think that Uh, I have converted everyone. I think everybody mm, right now is being like, you know what, that Drew, it's it's got a brain on that guy. Yeah, I don't know about that. Listen to him just brain thinking Mm, with his brain. Yeah, that's that's exactly what everybody's thinking. (laughs) Well, love to hear what y'all's hot takes are. And if you have any other cool pens with different filling mechanisms you would do. Yes. What your ideas are. And you can also ask us more questions. Um, you can leave us comments or uh, email us at pencast at And we'll take more questions for future episodes. But for today, we're going to move on to the pen spotlight on the Esterbrook Model J. Oh. All right. Ready? Boom. There we go. All right. All three generations. J sandwich here. That's right. And we've got the original. Yep, this is a Jay Senior Esterbrook. This is a vintage Esterbrook Model J. Uh, they made this in three different sizes. I know this is not the smallest one. I legitimately don't know if this is the like LJ or the Classic J. So I don't know if this is the midsize or the bigger. Oh, one. when you were telling me you didn't know the size, I thought you were talking about the nib size. No, well that too. It's got a number on it, which is associated with something. Esterbrook had a lot of different nibs way back in the day. This is my personal one. This is a 9556. Oh, yeah. that Whatever the heck that is. I'm sure it's something. Probably. It's something interesting. But um, the reason that these were originally called the J is basically because of the internal, like, components of the mechanism that make this lever filler operate was, like, in, in the shape of a J, apparently. Oh. I can't show it to you because I can take it apart. But 
That's why they called it the Model J. I love that. So I read, thanks to Pen Addict in their article that Brad Dowdy wrote a few years ago. Um, but yeah, this is like a pretty classic color. They were known for these celluloids. You know, there's a ton of vintage Esther Brooks out there that you can get pretty accessibly. Like if you're into have vintage pens or want to get into them, Esterbrook is a great place to start. Um, so I got one. I got a couple actually, but this is the the bigger J that I have that, uh, you know, is like just good to reference. And I'm like, oh, we're going to talk about the J. I can pull out my vintage one. There you go. I don't know all that much about it, but I know a little bit. And uh, yeah, so I thought it'd be cool just to have it out really just to show next to the, the newer ones. Yeah. So a lot's happened since these ones were developed. This pen's, I don't know, probably 50 years old, maybe more. I don't know the exact date. Um, but Esterbrook, since has basically completely sunsetted, was revived. It's not any of the original manufacturing, none of the original people involved kind of a thing. But they're trying to maintain some of the same spirit, right? So when they came out with the JR, it wasn't what does JR stand for? Do you know? J Reborn. J Reborn. So it wasn't Junior. No. It's not, but it is a smaller version. It so is. it's, you know, just in case there's any confusion well, on that. Well, smaller than, you know, a lot of pens. It might, it might not, yeah. it's probably not smaller than the one you have there. Well, that's why I wanted to kind of compare, right? So we can see kind of what it looks like. So, you know, this one, they went with, um, you know, kind of some of a vintage theme. You know, it's gonna be acrylic resin, not like a celluloid, like what they had back in the day, but they don't really make celluloids like that anymore. And they technically do call it a JR Pocket, so. JR Pocket, okay, yeah. there you go. So this one, it's a little heavier. Um, it's got like more metal components and stuff. But, you know, in my opinion, I feel like they did a pretty decent job in my very non-authoritative vintage, you know, opinion. Uh, I think they did a pretty good job maintaining some of the spirit. Yeah, of and they definitely the original. drew some inspiration on the clip. Yeah, absolutely. If I can show you both clips, it's not going to be exactly the same. And again, you know, this is back when like every pen manufacturer was manufacturing all their own components and stuff, or many of them. Um, so yeah, it's got some of like the ridges in the clip. Yeah. You know, not identical, but it's got the same. It's got an yeah, essence. and I think that's what they were going for. They weren't yeah. trying to reproduce the J, but they were trying to have it be somewhat of a spiritual successor. Right, so this is the one, the Model J, that's a, kind of a bigger version. So they're kind of sticking with some of the same packaging. And again, even the packaging has got kind of a vintage flair to Definitely. it. Definitely. Um, which is kind of cool. And uh, this is the first I've actually seen this been in person. Yeah, we're getting so, a live reaction. Yeah. Except you can't see his face. Nope. You can't on that camera. We're not. But we're not gonna show you that one. Okay, so here we go. Ebonite. There it is. Nice, a nice polished ebonite. You know, because sometimes you get ebonite polished. and it's, it like looks like a matte finish, but this is very polished, which I kind of dig. I don't know. The polished ebonite looks really classy. And look at that trim ring. That's that's the first thing that my eyes go to. I mean, it. Yeah, it's like a hammered finish on this, right? So it's yeah. Got, keep turning it. That's when you can really see the. Yeah. Can you see the, the yeah glitteriness kind of going on? If you can catch it right in the mm -hmm. light. Yeah. Um, at first, it just kind of looks kind of like, what is that, like wavy or kind of bent? Or what? Oh, it's like intentionally hammered right. to have that kind of finish. And it's not it's not like aggressive. Like no. touching it, it's, you know, you you barely feel it. But it just makes it kind of glitter a little bit, which is cool. Um, Size-wise, you know, it definitely has a, a similar shape to it, but it is a hardier pen for sure. Very similar clip, too. Yeah, so they kept some of that same essence, which is cool. But it's, it's a it's a different clip, obviously, in different size. Um, overall shape is pretty similar, but the the step here between the cap and the body is not as dramatic. No, like here, it's it seems like it's wearing a hat almost. Yeah, I think that the here it's a much more flushed. The, the Model body. J, I think, has a nice, more streamlined profile to it. Yeah, it's not quite as stark. Um, you know, nice long cap. Like the cap in relation to the rest of the body feels very long. I'm curious to see how it posts because the JR posts mm -hmm. really high. There we go. I like the, I like the threads are set and back And this a is bit. a number six nib, Brian. Yeah. So big difference between here and the JR. The JR yeah. definitely being a pocket pen is going to have a number five steel nib on it. The new Model J, pretty, pretty significantly meaning, larger number very six. Very meaningful difference in size. Yeah. Overall size, yeah. Which also means that Esterbrook can offer these in custom nib grinds. Which one do you mm -hmm. have there, Brian? 
This one is whatever one that you pulled off the shelf. I didn't pay attention. <laughs> Let me see. It might, which, I think it might be. Uh, this is the scribe. There we go. So um, we will be offering these in the scribe, the techo, the journaler, mm -hmm. and the needlepoint. Yeah. So, go, cool. so this is something that these are going to have that the JR cannot so the have logo. because these aren't going to be ground in number five size. Very prominent logo there in the finial. Very it stands out. Sorry, like 3D. And then you want to know how it posts? Okay. Oh yeah, that posts really well. It's not. It doesn't post quite as high as the JR does. The JR really sits well. Really sits high. Yeah, you think it's so? About the same. The JR Let's post see. doesn't even go down to that trim ring. Yeah, that's way high. Yeah, I mean, posted. They're almost. They're close to the same length. Yeah, because that JR. I think. Um, I think they might have been doing that on purpose so that the pocket pen, you know. Oh, so it's long since it's such a short pen. Potentially, thing? potentially. I don't, I don't know. know. Like, I got a pretty big hand in the JR. Yeah. I can actually use without it being posted. Yeah. The cap's pretty light though, so like posting it, even though it's a little higher on there, it's it's not like back weighted too bad or anything. No. And then this one, you know, the nice thing about it being hard rubber like this, there's not a lot of weight in the cap. You know, the, the ebonite material is relatively lightweight just on its own. So you got a little bit more weight here with like the hammered finish and, you know, the nib unit and stuff like that. But overall, the pen is is lighter than it probably looks. How is How, how sharp are those center bands? You go, cartridge converter. Do you think they would um, bother someone's you know, inner, the inner, inner palm or anything? Are they... I don't think so. It's no? so subtle. Nice. I mean, if you want to touch it. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah. It's like very subtle. Yeah, these are not sharp at all. No, it's not gonna be like a like the grip of a Twisby 580 ALR or anything close to that. No. It's really, it's, it's honestly more aesthetic than anything, yeah. um, that hammered finish. In terms of hammered finishes that I've seen on other wares, this is about as subtle as you can get with yeah. a hammered finish. It's really lovely. Yeah, it does look pretty good. I don't know, it really kind of works. like. The, ebonite, the 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 material in combination with you know the hammered finish there the overall styling of it looks a little more vintage it kind of works for me did you notice that the scribe the all of the other nibs are going to have custom engravings now i did not notice yeah, so that check that out it says scribe yeah, on it yeah that's cool so previously the techo nib had um some uh, kanji on it but mm -hmm. now all of them have oh that's cool specific engravings well they're yeah. they're probably like committing to doing it more reliably yeah, and stuff which is like really that. Exciting. It's really awesome. Yeah. I don't know. I think I Gina dig. I think Gina has her initials uh has their initials on it. Cool. And then uh the Techo, you know, kanji and then the scribe as you can see here. I don't think that I've seen yeah, that posts really well. Uh what the needle point looks like yet. Like I all I have to do is basically like barely push it on there. And I think just the nature of the material itself it like kind of grabs yeah, onto, it grabs onto, its, onto itself really well. I like that. And what I like about Ebonite, you know, is, um, you know, it's the, what is it, hygro hygroscopic or yeah. whatever the, so it like kind of can absorb and retain moisture a little bit. So for me, I have super oily fingers. So with things like pure celluloid and Ebonite um, and the, like the Homo sapiens lava resin, that type of thing, I, it gives me a better grip because the oiliness doesn't keep me like all slipping around all over the place. And it's a nice brown too. This is a nice brown, isn't mm -hmm. it? Definitely. Yeah, I like it. And it goes well with the gold trim. That's it that's does. one reason. It does. You know, you know, objectively, I think brown pens are good. Is that they work really well with gold trim? Yeah, it's a neutral color, very earthy. Cool. All right. Well, there you go. So. If you're interested in that, check them out. We're going to have those, I think, as of when this video launches is when we'll have them. That's right. Uh, worldwide launch. So check those out. I don't know, are they limited or anything? Do you know, Drew? I don't think so. I think these are going to be around be for the long haul. Yeah. I cool. don't, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, don't trust us on that. Maybe no. verify that, but. As of right now, they're not on our website, so. We're, it will we're, be by the time we publish this yes, video, but we were yes. proactively shooting this. It's like, I hope nothing changes with launch, but I think we'll be fine. But anyway, there you go. That's what we got, Estherbrook Model J. Now it's time for nonsense. Hey! All right, Drew, what have you been up to? There's been some things, nothing, yeah. nothing too crazy. Honestly, a lot of it has been getting ready for the DC Pen Show. Yes. 
big, big. We are doing that. Big, uh, you know, not a lot of time commitment, but thinking about things. Mm-hmm. I really want it to go off as well as it can. I'm sure that there are going to be some things that I'm not expecting. And as far as the pen cast goes, that's, I mean, showing up and talking to people, I'm like, I'm not worried about <laughs> yeah. that. But, you know, actually recording a pen cast there and making sure that everybody that there, that's there can hear us has been a mental commitment that I, yeah. I want to make sure. Cause you know, I was like, yeah, Brian, we should do this. And you're like, oh, okay. I was like, it's, are you sure? It's going to be gonna a be lot of I'm thing. like, you're yeah, like, no, it'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. So I want to make sure that I'm like, not just <laughs> leaving this on you to do all of everything, you know? So no, I'm, it's been a good, I'm trying it's to, been a good balance. Yeah. I feel, I feel like, so I'm definitely want to be carrying my weight. So I'm trying to no, have that. Fine. And as of right now, um, we feel confident that we'll be able to not only deliver to those of you who can attend the DC Pen Show a solid experience, but for those of you who will be watching that pen cast, you know, as normal, mm-hmm. a solid pen cast. The audio a will be good. Viewable enough experience. The yeah. audio <laughs> will be fine. We're going to use the same audio we have here, but um, visually should be fine. Yeah. But you you don't care. That's- we control less of our environment. <clears throat> at the show yeah so definitely been doing that that's been on my brain I'm, we might talk more about that later but um yeah uh, i've been working on a little bit of archer's halloween costume again i'm taking yeah. my time with it i'm screwing up a lot trying some different things uh mm-hmm. i had to modify the helmet a little bit because i used the same helmet plan that i used two years ago for his costume okay but i had to rebuild it this time without modifying it quite as much but then mm-hmm. modifying it a different way i needed to make sure that one eye was completely right. not there. So an eye hole needed to be not there. So that was tough because the mm-hmm. pattern wrapped around the eye. It wasn't just like you do the helmet and then cut out a hole. Mm. The, there was one plate here that connect connects at the bridge of the nose, another plate here that curls around to the base of the eye, and then a mouthpiece that curves around to the side of the eye. So I needed to wow. make sure that three different pieces of the helmet you know, I needed to like redraw the pattern so that that I was not missing. Okay. So if I had done it wrong, it could have like been bulgy or like right. crooked or something like that. So, but I did it. It looks okay. Nice. I was happy with it. But and I'm going to take a break now because I'm like, all right, whatever. I've got until October. I'm not going to be. Yeah, you got time. So I say that, but I'll probably obsess over it and <laughs> have it done super early because <laughs> that's me. That's fine. So, um, but I might take a break because. Um, uh, my friend, my uh, our friend, the community's friend, CY from Tokyo, decided mm-hmm. that I needed to have a Gunpla model, which is a plastic model of a Gundam um, from Japan. Okay. And uh, I'll probably be taking a break and putting that together. All right. Because, you know, apparently I need another rabbit hole to fall down. So... What is that? I'm not even familiar with that. Uh, so it's Gundam plastic model, essentially. So Gundam is a you know a very long running and revered anime. Um, okay. With mechs, and uh, this is oh. just a really detailed, many many piece model kit that uh, requires no glue. This looks cool. Uh, yeah, they look really cool, and I know that there's a not insignificant uh, uh, portion of the pen community that is into this as well. So I know that. Um, Oh wow! I know so that it's I'll, like like the little punch out plastic pieces. Well, and, here's the thing. Here's the reason I haven't started it yet is because you need some flush cutters to really get mm, those out. Like you could twist them if you wanted to, but you're gonna have these little like you know dongles no, on them. No. So I had some flush cutters that I had for um, putting together those metal 3D models. Okay. And I put all of that stuff up in the attic because I hadn't been I had haven't been using them recently. And I kept the cutters out because I'm like, I'm going to keep these out because these are, I, I can use. Yeah. I don't know where I put them. Oh, gosh. I went up into the attic. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I kept those out. And I went up into the attic, checked. I'm like, no, they're not in here. So mm. I definitely kept them out yeah. knowing that I would need them. And I have no idea where I put them. <sighs> I do that all the time. I so yeah. I even with your spreadsheet? Well, the spreadsheet's for the pens. Okay. You have a spreadsheet for your tools, though, don't you? Uh, that's like more like a maintenance oh, schedule. Oh, okay. It's not like yeah. locations of tools. So I, no, I'm going to need to. They're a mess. I'm going to need to buy another pair of uh, of nippers, flush cutters, whatever you want to call yeah. them. But once I do that, yeah, I'm going to get try that's to smart. Get, I've and, only used. I've done like model cars and stuff like that. I usually just use an exacto knife and like use that to sort of shave down the. I guess I could do the that as extra well. Plastic but bits. it'd be quicker just to snip them all out. Oh, it'd be way quicker. Yeah, I didn't know that a tool like that existed for that purpose. So yeah, well, um, I I used it for the metal model, so that's the same basic okay. principle. So right, right. 
right. um, they come in metal sheets and you mm-hmm. snip them out of the metal sheets, right, right. but you snip okay. them as close to the uh, you right. know piece itself as possible. Uh-huh. Um, so I'll buy another pair of those and then get started on this. I was thinking I could do it with Archer. He might have fun. Um, Probably. He's a good it. age for that. So, yeah. yeah. So that's on the horizon. Okay. More projects. I've another, got a Game Boy yeah. from my friend, uh, Frances. She's going to, um, she wants me to add another backlit screen and a different case for her Game Boy. So I've got that project kind of hanging out in the wings. Mm-hmm. Um, she's like, yeah, how much money should I send you? I'm like, no, no, don't send me anything. I'm probably going to procrastinate a bit. <laughs> I'll let you know when I buy this right. stuff. You don't want to like actually commit fully no, to it. Yeah. Do not give me money. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, like I, I told her I'll put it together. Just like, just pay for the parts. But right, right. I haven't done anything yet, so I need to. I need to get on that. I have no shortage of time wasting projects. Right. Still right. don't have functioning porch lights, but I have many. You know, <laughs> random projects. Oh my gosh! How long has this been going on now? It's going to probably be a year. Oh wow! I know. I'm the wow. worst. I have a. I, we have a. Um, we have a a lantern in the front yard. Okay. If we did not have that, I probably would have been forced to do this sooner. But because yeah. we have that, I'm like, oh, you know, it's lit oh, up, yeah. kind of. Yeah. Good is the enemy of great, Drew. It really is. Yeah. It really you is. Good enough light, but not I, great that's, light. That's the thing. I need you to, could you like, <laughs> you know, don't tell Shannon I asked you to do this, but you could just drive by and like, you know, and take just, a hammer and smash the uh, <laughs> lantern so I have no choice but to actually do something productive I thought you were saying, could time. I just drive by and fix your porch lights? No, I haven't bought any yet. <laughs> oh, gosh. I know. And I, and I got a gift card from the power washing guys too. So, I mean, it's, wow. not, it's not like it's a money thing. Okay. okay. Anyway, yeah. Welcome to me. Yeah. Um, on Sunday, I took Archer to a uh, birthday party for uh, our friends, um, Michael and Brittany. Their daughter had a birthday, so we went over to their house, and uh, he got to play around with that whole thing. Uh, had some cake. They lost power halfway through the party, so that's exciting. The kids didn't care. They just yeah, whatever. Yeah, you know, they're they, like, oh yeah, it's an adventure, and you're just like, oh gosh. Yep. <laughs> So um, we did that. As an adult, your power goes out and you're just like, oh my gosh, are we going to lose the meat in our yeah. fridge and all of the uh, stuff? Yeah, well, like- <laughs> I think that they live out in Rockville, so it's more common for them. Okay. But, uh, and then uh, we came back. It was still early, so I was like, I don't know. Can you, can we just go somewhere, please? Can, can we just go and uh, look around Target? We can look at toys at Target. You know, I just want to get out. I don't, I don't want to just sit around the house. So we took him to Target, let him look at the, the Ninja Turtles because he's been super into Ninja Turtles recently. He got the yeah, new movie, movie coming, coming out. out. That's reviving Yeah, everything. then he's been buying some old school toys. He wants to buy some of the new ones. So I told him to bring his wallet just in case. He saw that they had the new Raphael there from the new movie, but okay. he didn't want Raphael. He wanted Leonardo. Okay. But then I saw him start just kind of like looking around for stuff to spend his money on. I'm like, mm. hey, what, if you if they had everything you wanted, what what would you get? He's like, well, I would get Leonardo um, because that's that's what I want. I said, you should, I think you should just wait and get the thing you want. You yeah. know, maybe, maybe another day I can take you to another Target. Like you don't have that much. I mm. think the best thing to do would I, I want you to get what you want. And yeah. he's like, and I saw him like, I don't know if I'm going to win this battle because he saw a bunch of random crap. He's like, oh, I could get that. I could get that. I'm like, but yeah. you could, but. Yeah. Then you wouldn't be able to get the thing you want. So right. it was a good moment. Yeah. He walked out of Target not having bought anything. So I was really, him. I was really proud of him. Um, emotional intelligence right there. Yeah. And uh, so super proud of him there. And he didn't know this, but weeks prior, I had actually found that Leonardo. Oh, really? And picked it up because I know that with Target, you never know what's there. Yeah, that's true. I knew he would eventually want it. Especially a hot thing like a movie, so, I, you know. Exactly. They're yeah. going to go. And Target, like when we were kids, toys would stay in toy stores for years. Like sure. if you wanted Leonardo, you'd be able to get it this year or next year. Like it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, now they're gone after a couple of weeks sometimes. Yeah. So I went in and picked it up and um, I told Shannon what had happened. And she's like, that's really cool of him. That That's really cool. And I said, I did buy that Leonardo. <laughs> and she's like, oh, how long have you had it? And I said, two weeks. She's like, well, I don't know how well it'd be teaching him to not spend money if we just turn around and give him the thing. Right. But also that's really cool that he did that. You can do it if you want to. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. So I was like, hey. Oh, um, so I told him, I was like, hey, you did a really good job. Yeah. I actually already have it for you. So here we go. And he just, his reaction was fantastic. And yeah. she was at a show that day. Um, and uh, so I went ahead and filmed it just in case he gave a good reaction so I could send it to her. Oh, and he man. definitely did. Oh, that's awesome. So um, he was really excited. It was such a, just a crazy moment. Me like handing a Leonardo Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle action figure yeah. to my son. It's like like you're time traveling, right? Oh Isn't my that God. Crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Like 
weird. And to, to think that I remember when the adults were just beside themselves at how dumb of a concept Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were. It is dumb. But it's, it's a dumb concept. Let's be honest with ourselves. And, it, and it's still around. It doesn't around. make any sense. It's yeah, still around. Like, the fact that it's endured is impressive. Yeah. I, and endured well. Yeah. I don't so, know why it has, honestly. I really don't. Yeah. But so, this is coming from like a genuine Ninja Turtles fan as a yeah. kid. Like I remember listening. I, forget, I don't know why. But I was at the in the grocery store parking lot one time, and I, there was they were broadcasting the TV show on the radio. Wow! I don't remember. It was like CBS or whatever channel that it was on at the time. I don't know what radio station it was or whatever. But I remember tuning in, and we were like waiting for my mom or something in the car because this is back when cell phones didn't exist, and you just as a kid you were just like. Um, I got to go wherever my parents go. And you just kind of do that all the time. So we would like listen to the radio and waiting in the car and making up stupid car games. And this is like what my whole life was. Right. But I remember that like every now and then on like a Sunday morning or some, some random time, That's or maybe awesome. it was like Saturday, maybe it was like while I was broadcasting. I don't remember exactly how this happened, but I remember hearing the, just the Ninja Turtles show, like the TV show. How about that? It wasn't a radio show. It was just the noise from the TV on the radio. And I was like, this is amazing. This is everything I want in life. Yeah, <laughs> you know? seriously. That's pretty uh, awesome. I'm assuming Leonardo was your favorite. Um, Who was my favorite? I don't know. I like Donatello. Yeah. He was like the smart, like yeah. the nerd. But I think I like Michelangelo a lot too because mm-hmm. he was like the fun, goofy one. Yeah. I don't know if I had like one distinct favorite. Like when my Ninja Turtles toys, I had, I had a little bit of everybody. Mm-hmm. But mine was very random. I had yeah. like this Donatello that like converted into a car. Oh, I remember him. He's like a transformer yeah, type thing. I remember that. I had a Raphael that was like this big weird mutant guy with like a pizza oven in his stomach. And oh yeah. Stick pizzas in his back and like break his arm and it would shoot pizzas out of the they chest. They had a separate vehicle was just a pizza <laughs> thrower. Okay. And at Target when I was with Archer, yeah. they actually had the turtle van, which we all know. Classic. They incorporated the pizza thrower into the turtle van. So there's like a gunner seat that pops out <laughs> and shoots pizzas. I was like, this is a, this is what just a, miraculous. Mutant you know the guy that did the shooting pizzas. The guy that the did the like, voice for um, Raphael was also Yakko from Animaniacs. That's awesome. Yeah, Rob I Paulson. loved Animaniacs. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know, I know you did. I haven't watched the new version though. I haven't watched the new Animaniacs. Neither have I. I've heard Rob, it's good Rob though. Paulson's fantastic. Huh. Um, that night we got back and we went out for pizza at Mod. It was one of those like it's like a Chipotle but for pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we went there and when we got there. Archer said, hey, do you remember what you told me last time we came here in, in here? I was like, oh, God. What What did you tell him? I don't know, but he, <laughs> he says, no, I mean, I know now, according to him. He said that mm. like, next time we were there, I told him that I would let him choose whatever I got on my pizza. Oh. And he was like looking at me like with an evil that does grin. Sound, that does sound like something you might say. Though. All right, I probably did. But what I told him was, all right, maybe I did, but it was probably if you did something. I would do this. Mm. I don't think I would just randomly say that. I, it was probably, yeah, if you, you do this, I'll let you choose myself. And he's like, well, what was that thing I needed to do? I was like, oh, I don't know. No. Oh, no. So He's on to you, Drew. I So I said, I don't know. He's working your memory against you. <laughs> I didn't do it, but I so I don't know. Maybe I broke a promise, but I wouldn't just do that randomly. I would need to get something out of him. He'd need to clean his room or something. And because oh. he couldn't remember either, I did not do it. Just wait a couple of years, Drew. I know. He's going to stick to his guns more. I'm surprised. Like, once for, the, for once it, the tween years kick in. He seems like he pays attention to nothing. <laughs> but yet that crap, he's boom, ready, always ready to yeah. recall. Well, he doesn't have to pay attention. He can just conveniently say whatever he needs to right. and, and you're also, not going to be able to refute it. Because I've got a terrible memory. So I'm like, oh God, who to trust? <laughs> right. I can trust Shannon. I can't trust him. Anyway. No. She's so, training him. Keep in mind. Oh He's learning God. from her as well. Yeah. But a lot <laughs> of good, a, on one. a good chunk of our uh, weekend was uh, spent figuring out his new smartwatch. So we got him a okay. smartwatch. Um, it was by a company called Gab. So yeah, yeah. this company makes phones and watches that just don't have internet access. Yeah. So if you like, just... If you want to just for kids, right, bare basically. bones phone that just texts yeah. and calls, this is the thing you get. Yeah. So um, went ahead and took the plunge. They're doing like a half off sale. So um, nice. I was going to get one anyway. So I went ahead and got it. Uh, so it was just gah. Gah, half off gah. <laughs> um, so we've been doing that, setting that up. 
Shannon was like not certain that she was into the idea until he got it and started sending her like poop emojis and stuff. And then <laughs> That's pretty she, fun, right? Oh yeah. Well, as soon as that <laughs> happened, she's like, oh my God, I love this. Because she's been doing these rehearsals and she's kind of felt bad because yeah. she hasn't been around as much. So the fact that he can like record a voice memo and saying good night, I love you and send it to her, like it it has meant That's a awesome. lot to her. That's awesome. And you know, that that has been really cool. And we tested the GPS. It's pretty accurate. Okay. Um, so being able to find him, we can make the thing beep if he loses it. Um, it's uh, got these tasks where if he does certain things, he can say, all right, I did this thing. We can send him some coins that he can then spend to unlock moves for the digital pets that come with the thing. Um, wow. And uh, he can text anybody that's that we load into the app that he has access to call or text. Okay. Um, but he only, can only text using emojis or pre-programmed responses. Okay. So we get 20 pre-programmed things that we can control and type in, and then he can just use those. So it's like, nice. you know, I'm ready to be picked up. You know, um, can you call me? You know, I also programmed in, programmed in there. Lunch was terrible because he always wants to tell <laughs> us how bad his lunch was whenever we pick, <laughs> we pick him up. So now he can text us every time he has a bad lunch at daycare. <laughs> Now, to be fair, they give them weird stuff at his daycare. Really? I don't know why. Like, he gets the normal school stuff. But in, during the summer, they, they, they don't have an option. They get one thing. And it's like, you know, tuna salad and stuff like that. I'm like, that, that'd be fine for adults. But you're going to give a bunch of third, okay. fourth graders tuna salad and nothing gamble. else? It is a huge gamble. So he's going to make in bulk, though. So I can see why they yeah, would want to do that. But they, they got, I don't know. It's like, mm. did you not, what have for having like chicken nuggets and french fries? Like, they're kids. You know what they're going to do. I know they're trying to be healthy and diverse and fresh ingredients and stuff like that, which I appreciate. Yeah. But he ain't going to eat that. <laughs> he ain't going <laughs> to eat right. that. It's not healthy if you don't eat it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, anyway, he, uh, I'm talking about Archer this whole time, but I spent a lot of time with him this weekend. <laughs> Uh, he finished a show called Gravity Falls, which is on Disney. It's a really good show. Okay. It only had two seasons, but it was heard, done really well. I've heard of that. What's the premise of that? Uh, it's like two kids that spend the summer with their uh, great uncle um, who runs this kitschy little, like, phony mystery spot in the Pacific Northwest. Okay. You know, called the Mystery Shack. It's like, oh, look, it's a, you know, it's just a, it's a take on, like, a tourist trap okay. sort of deal. Um, so every episode, they kind of confront like whether it's like a Bigfoot sort of thing or like gnomes in the forest. There's always something weird that they have to solve. Okay, gotcha. But there's like an overarching storyline too, which is pretty fascinating. But he finished that. I caught the finale and it was really, really good. Um, so yeah, between that and Steven Universe, he's been he's been picking them pretty well. And then Shannon and I are continuing to watch The Witcher, which is fine. It's this series, unfortunately, has been kind of declining really yeah henry cavill the lead guy mm -hmm. he left the series you know i mostly well known to be creative differences because he's a huge mm -hmm. fan of the books and stuff like that and okay. as someone who also read the books like they're taking some some liberties mm -hmm. some hefty liberties i'm not i'm trying not to let it bother me but i can see how if you wanted it to be beholden to the source material how you would be very upset so yeah you know, it's a thing. We're going to finish it off because, you know, we started it and yeah. it's still got some good points, but hmm. yeah. And then after that, we'll probably move on to either uh, The Righteous Gemstones or Succession, both on HBO. I've heard good things about Succession. Yeah. Succession is not fun to watch, but it's good. I don't enjoy it. <laughs> um, I told her I'd watch Succession if she watched Andor with me, and she did, so... There you go. We'll watch it. We've all we've watched all the other seasons. We this haven't watched this last one. I'm not looking okay. forward to it. But it's it's kind of like it's like Ozark. Like this is good, but I'm yeah. not enjoying it. I'm I not having a about, good time. I felt that way about Ozark. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Ozark, I hate I was, everybody. Ozark. I was kind of like, gosh, when is this going to be over? That's it. That that. But but you know it's good, right? Yeah. Everybody's acting is fantastic. Sure. This is a well made show. Yeah. Nothing I, about the show makes you feel good. Right. It's that's Succession. Okay. It's objectively <laughs> yeah. excellent. But it's not fun to watch. Sort of like watching the news. It makes you kind of miserable. <laughs> makes you not feel good about humanity. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, we're going to do that. Fun. Yeah. Good times. Righteous Gemstones is funny, though. Okay. Also dark, but not mm. in the succession way dark. Gotcha. So, yeah, that and just getting ready for DC, man. Yeah. It'll be yeah. exciting. As soon as, this, as soon as this publishes, I will be packing up the mics and everything and skedaddling up north. Yeah, it'll be exciting. Hopefully see you. It'll be exciting. I'm a little nervous. This has been my first pen show in four years. 
Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know if I can handle it. Oh, we'll you'll, see. You'll be fine. I'm sure I'll be all right. Yeah. Once I get there and I start talking to people and stuff, I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, there's amazing people in this. Are we talking community. about the are we talking about the pen show later at all? Uh, a little bit, but you know, we can okay. talk about it now. Well, I was just saying, I was gonna say that we're gonna do a live Q and A, which we're yep. pretty excited about. We're gonna be um, using an app for all of the attendees to mm -hmm. um, send in questions directly to us, and we're going to mm -hmm. uh, just kind of filter those in. Yeah. So uh, for our listening audience next week, you know, we'll. You know, make sure that you know what the questions yeah, are. Yeah, it'll, feel, like it'll feel more like a normal pencast for you yeah. all, but we'll be we'll have a live audience, so I don't know if it'll like. Well, it'll up. be a short pencast. Yeah, we'll shorten it because yeah. you know we don't have unlimited amount of time yeah. in the space that we're going to so be in. We're going to probably skip you know new stuff. Um, we'll keep our shenanigan talking to a minimum. Yeah, most of the shenanigan <laughs> talking will be about the pen about cast, the show. The, yeah, the, the pen show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it'll be a fun time, and then we've yeah. got. Not all of our ducks in a row, but the most important ducks are standing relatively single file-ish. Yeah. I call that a win. Yep. Cool. Um, yeah. I've been thinking about the DC show too. Yeah. And Rachel's family lives in the area there. So, you know, we'll get to see them a little bit too. That'll be fun. Um, let's see here. What did I do? Well, I love to work a lot in the heat. So I did more of that this weekend. It was um, hot this weekend. It was hot. Yes, it was very hot. <laughs> Golly. Um, I was uh, cleaning my sister's deck and play set and cleaning moss off the roof of her shed. Oh, my God. Basically, I was outside using a power washer like the whole day. If that is if that is what refills your cup, Brian, I'm, I'm... Well, it helps her out. I like power washing. It's just I've done it so much. It's like how I paid my way through school and early Good Day Pens days. But also it's good because it was, I mean, I think, what was it, like 99 degrees with a heat index of like 105. All right, you just said also it's good because, let's yeah, see, yeah. it was 99. It's so good. how are you going to end this sentence? I, it was so hot and just kind of miserable. All right. Weather-wise. You started, it was good because. Yeah, because it's like my, it's like my, it adjusts my gauge, right? So like today's kind of warm. But I'm like, well, it's not nearly what it was on Saturday. So you're saying it was good because it was miserable. Yeah, because I like I <laughs> I chose to do it, and I knew it's kind of like, you know, it's like when you exercise, you like push yourself, and you're like, I know I'm going to be sore. Yeah. But it's going to make me stronger and yeah. more resilient, and I'm going to remember being sore. And then when the next time I need to go like lift something, I'm going to be like, oh, it's not that bad. Yeah. You know. So like I go outside today, and I'm like, yeah, it's a little warm, but I'm like, well, it's nothing like it was a few days ago. Context you know, it just, is like, everything. Resets my gauge a little yeah, bit. Yeah. No, so you're I not. You're like not. It. The sentence made no sense, <laughs> but you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, perspective is everything. Yeah. Exactly. Just like you know, that's why every now and then you need to have a cup of Chick Fil A coffee. Because it's hot garbage. <laughs> and once you never, have Chick-fil-A coffee, Chick coffee, you will enjoy anything else. There you go. You can even go to Taco Bell and get their coffee and be like, wow, this is fantastic. Taco Bell has coffee? Yeah, for, with their breakfast. With their breakfast. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Taco Bell coffee is infinitely better than Chick-fil-A coffee. Wow. Is that the worst fast food coffee, you think? Fast food coffee, yes. Gas station coffee, no. Well, gas station coffee, there's no limit to how bad that could potentially be. There is not. <laughs> there is not. I mean, you gotta like you never you never know how long that, that pot could have been sitting there. Worst coffee I ever had was at a uh have you ever it was at a like a boat gas station. Oh wow. Like you know, I like was on a marina yeah, kind of a thing. Yeah. Don't know why I did that. Why would you want coffee I don't on know a boat? I don't know it was not a hot particularly hot day i was like oh look coffee well you're just like i know primes for coffee at all hey, times but you know <laughs> it was good because <laughs> because it makes all of the coffee seem better you have chick-fil-a coffee and you're like well at least it's not that marina yes, coffee exactly wow that's uh, really funny um so yeah the power i call it a boat gas station <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's kind of what it is but there's a word for it drew yeah mar yeah whatever <laughs> Like, I know. I've been on a boat like three times I know, in my life. Same, same. I, yeah. Boat gas station. Yeah, you know, those boat gas stations. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, let's see. I was working outside a lot. That was hot and gross, mm. but it was fun. Um, my sister-in-law visited us last week. Oh, that's right. So, like, her husband was at, like, a leadership retreat kind of a thing for yeah. a few days. So, she was like, well, I get to sit at home with the kids because it's summertime. They're, they're not in school. 
So she was like, I could sit at home alone with the kids or we could come down and see you guys. So she came down. So I still worked all day, so it didn't change my life all that much. But, you know, I got to see my niece and nephew. Yeah, I remember because Rachel do was doing stuff. meetings from the house and she was in a different room than she's normally in. Yeah, and there's like four kids in the house yeah. and there's just shenanigans happening all the time. I mean, just piles of stuffed animals with people jumping into them and all the mm. things, all the fun things. Um, that, that's, that's, but it was a good time. That's a good kid life it right was a, there. It was a Jumping good time. into a pile of stuffed animals. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All of our kids are like they can't have enough stuffed animals. So when they bring them all together, and my kids have had, been getting stuffed animals regularly their entire life now. So it's like, they can make a Scrooge McDuck type, you know, vault room filled with stuffed animals basically at this point. That sounds amazing. I think what, at one point, they all four of them basically like buried themselves within the stuffed animals and then like exploded out of this pile. How do you not let messy kid rooms bother you? Oh, it bothers me. What do, you, what do you do? Because I, I, I've, I I've been working on this thing where every time I... I don't go in them. Cause when, I just when, avoid them. When, 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 when I put Archer to bed, mm-hmm. I'm drawn to criticize something about the room. Oh, 100%. And I either his drawers are open, mm-hmm. there's crap between me and the bed where I can I cannot hug him or kiss him goodnight. Sure, sure. So I'm like, dude, just give me a path. Shut your drawers. Yeah. Why are your covers destroyed? Like, And I'm yeah. like tucking them in. And I, I keep telling myself, like, you do not need out. to be criticizing your son before bedtime every right. night. So yeah. I'm being very aware of that. I'm working on it. I've told him, I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. Your covers don't affect me. Mm-hmm. I just want you to know I'm working on it. You know, trying to be very upfront about that. But still, like, wh- where do I draw the line? Do I? We say goodnight to our kids not in their rooms. <laughs> Is that what and I mean? They go, they go to their rooms. So I, so I don't go in their rooms very often. <laughs> so you just stay out of sight, out of mind. More or less. <laughs> that's, that's helped everybody. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Joseph, he's pretty particular. He keeps his room pretty spick and span. Oh, yeah, you know, Ellie, shirt. she's a beautiful soul. <laughs> she's a creative spirit. She is kind of an agent of chaos mm-hmm. when it comes to things being in places all over yeah. the house. But with her, it's not just her room. It's kind of just everywhere. It just kind yeah. of sort of follows her. But I'm not exactly the cleanest person myself. You've seen my backpack. You've seen my office and my desk. And if I'm not like scheduling things and like trying to organize things intentionally, my natural state is a bit of chaos. Yeah, yeah. Your desk isn't as messy as mine is usually. Like you just well, keep, you just keep I, all your stuff. Yeah, I've. It's taken work though. Yeah, I mean, you see my desk at home; it looks like an absolute nightmare. It looks like mine at work. Worse. <laughs> oh god. Worse. Oh man. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I basically have enough room to like type, and that's yeah. pretty much it. I have to shove my, stuff. My mo is I will have like a working space, mm-hmm. and stuff will just pile up onto it until it's completely unworkable, and then I'll just abandon it and go like find a new. <laughs> that's what space. Archer does. He's got his room, abandons that, goes into the playroom, abandons that, and then all of a sudden we've got like toys and stuff on the dining room table. Yeah, and it starts creeping into the whole house and you're like, like, all right, this is unacceptable. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Oh yeah. I've had many situations with my kids where I'm like, all right, you all have like an hour to clean it and then I'm taking everything on your floor, putting it in a black trash bag and not throwing it out, but I'm like, I'm just gonna get it off the floor. Yeah. And then if you don't need it back, then eventually I'll throw the bag out. (laughs) Uh, I don't do that much anymore. Okay. Because well, that makes me feel that better. That causes a lot of stress so, in the house. <laughs> so you don't have like some like I'm not. There's no. I'm not, I'm not lacking some fatherly skill that I need to develop, other than disregard. You, you're. <laughs> this is two drunks holding each other up here right now, Drew. I do not have this one figured out, but you know, we've got perhaps some mm. non neurotypical things going on in our household that are so do our you know, children probably adjusted. Yeah, yeah. Ad- adjusted. You know, uh, uh, expectations. But I do hear you though. Like there's yeah. a natural tendency to like, especially I, this is really bad. Like when I come home from work and I walk in the door and I'm immediate like tripping over shoes in yeah. the middle of the kitchen and there's half eaten bowl of Cheerios and there's like ice cream that had been scooped out and it's dripped onto the floor. Like when I walk in and I'm just met with all that, yeah. I'm immediately just like, kids, what the actual yeah. heck? Like, what is all this? And I don't want to be the, the you know? critical dad, you know? So I, I yeah, really don't want to also... be that guy. But yeah, so I just somebody's I, gotta like. I know. I just need to. I need to make sure else, the thing, know. the things that I am bringing up, are yeah. the things that need to be brought up. And fair enough. The covers, and the timing. If, the if timing he wants matters. to, if he wants to do the alligator death roll on his sheets every night, yeah. then you know what, Drew? Yeah. 
that's the way how he wants to sleep. That's fine. That does not affect me. Oh, we're we're so far so, beyond like making bed and all that kind of yeah. stuff. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm happy if it's just like if it just stays contained in your room. Right. As long as it's like spilling, spilling out, out the into hallway. the hallway and I'm tripping <laughs> over. Yeah, that's that's so a good it's adjusted expectation. That's a good mindset. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, as my therapist said, it's like basically if it really bothers you that much, you just take care of it. Yeah, and like don't try and get your kids to like do all that stuff all the time. I'll keep you that know? in mind. In ter- not in like their room. I'm not gonna go in and clean their room. Forget right. that. I'm like, if you want to live like an absolute pig, <laughs> friggin' fine. <laughs> you know, as long as there aren't like bugs and rodents right, right. in your room. So we have like a no food rule that we stick to pretty good. That's fair. Like no bring food out of the kitchen kind of a thing. No bag of apples. They still sneak it though. <laughs> they still sneak it up. Do they there. know that you know that? Like boxes of cereal. Oh, come on. I'm not joking. That would be subtle. And I love Ellie. She's like such a great spirit and she's a lot like me yeah. in a lot of ways. But she like was going to get a snack. This is like as I was getting ready to prepare dinner, right? Because this is how it goes. She probably like didn't have lunch. She was yeah. whatever doing. And then she came down. She was getting a snack. No joke. She had an entire one of those big like boxes of goldfish. She grabbed that whole thing. She had, I think, like two boxes of cereal. And like, she had like this arm load what? of stuff. And I was like, Ellie, what is all this? It's not a snack. And she was like, oh, I think I grabbed too much. And I was like, <laughs> You, you think? think? <laughs> I was like, what's the serving size here? The serving size things helps a lot. Like yeah. Trail mix, like they would just eat all the trail mix in one sitting. Don't give them cheese balls then, because you and, know how many cheese balls oh. are in a serving? It's like 30. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I love that because. We're, we've like trained them now to like look at the serving size. Yeah. And Joseph's such a rule follower. He's kind of like Rachel. He's like, whatever, it's 13 M&Ms. Oh. Like counts out 13 M&Ms and that's the thing. So like, oh, maybe I should try like that. trail mix and stuff like that. We like keep the scoop. It's like a third cup or whatever. So we keep like a measuring spoon like in the trail mix. Oh, I wonder how many servings servings are in Oreos because he's been going through some Oreos recently. It's like two. It's Good. not many. Good. It's not many. Oh, Oreos are, I'm terrible with Oreos. <laughs> I'm ter- oh. We buy Oreos and it's like, Times. What, like, what sort of stuffing human are you? Are you like double stuff, single more the stuff? Better. The more really? The better. You not not like the mega I want though. It all. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Oh man. I want it all. See, I'm like both Shannon. I like and I, mint. The mint. Mint's Oreos good. Those are the best. Mint's good. Shannon and I are actually very aligned. We just like the regular Oreos. I mean, those are good. Regular Oreos. I like the thin ones. She's not quite into those, but um, yeah, regular regular. Give me thin with mega stuff. Now we're talking. Oh God. <laughs> if I could get mega stuff with the mint. Filling that would be the best. Oh my god, that's what I would like because I just love filling. But I like I'm when I eat cake, I'm like I want all the icing. That's like <laughs> I just give me all like butter, like buttercream icing. Oh, buttercream's fantastic. Yeah. Oh god, yeah. If you get the like, you know, the edge of it where it's got all the icing on the side and on the top, and then if it's got some like flowers or something on top, I'm do you like, like yes. cream, do you like cream cheese icing? Yes. Yeah, like carrot Absolutely. cake icing or uh, red velvet. Oh yeah. Mm. All right. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm getting so hungry right now. All, All right. right. Uh, what else is going hey, on? Ryan. So, yes. What well, we're getting there. So, that was, my, that was nice my sister-in-law's stuff. family was here. Lots of fun kid time, stuff like that. Lots of, we continued on the high school musical thing. You know, Ellie wanted to watch more of that. And I was like, oh my gosh. Thankfully, they watched it during the day. Mm-hmm. They watched like the sequel, because there's sequels yeah. of it. And then they ended up actually making a Broadway musical of high school musical as well. Mm-hmm. So now we have playlists that my kids listen to that have high school musical songs anyway i'm just embracing it um but it was like you know spending time with the cousins and my kids and all that kind of stuff i was looking for like what are fun interesting things that we could do you know because like everybody's kind of getting stir crazy in the house because it was so freaking hot too so like by the time i would come home from work everybody had been like kind of cooped up in the house all day and so i was like finally cool enough after dinner to like go outside and not die of heat. So one thing that I threw out there as an idea, I was like, well, I recently just picked up some hay bales That's right, for, the targets. for my archery oh targets. My I got and some, for hay. some For landscaping stuff. What can I do with hay? I have some hay bales. I got a trailer. I was like, why don't I just like hitch it up and uh, I can just drive. And I threw this out. You know, I throw ideas out like this at the family all the time. I'm like, hey, we could do this. And most of the time the kids are like, meh. And, but they got really excited. All the kids did. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll actually do this. So I set up a little hayride and we drove around the yard and around our little na- no, driveway and stuff like that. And they had an absolute blast. Please tell me you got a picture of this. 
I did get some pictures. Yeah. Uh, Brian giving a hayride to a bunch of kids. I need yeah. to see that. that and is like my amazing. niece and nephew, they're what, uh, seven and nine? No, not seven and nine. Six and eight. How old are they? I have, t I have niece and nephew on the other side that are like very close in age, whatever. They're around that age. And, but they're like small. Like my kids are massive. They're like, my, they got my jeans. <laughs> I, so they like, I've seen them walking through here recently. Like, yeah. They're taller than Rachel. They're both larger, taller and heavier than Rachel now. Like if I was squinting, I would have thought you and Rachel walked by at some point. Right. Right. So my kids have not been in like lap sitting size in a very long time, but my niece and nephew are like, they can do that. So I was like, oh, okay. So I had my little tractor or whatever. I was pulling the wagon, or the pulling the trailer with the hay bales. And I was just like, you know, you know, I just offered, I was like, you want to sit on my lap and you can drive the tractor? And they were like, yeah, they're just having an absolute That is blast. so wholesome. I know, right? Right. And so like, here we are just like, no, I'm going to around it. But they had an absolute blast. Nice. So, I don't know, just being goofy, having fun. You know, That's just awesome. stuff like that. I'm like, you know, it's such a hassle to like go out somewhere and go try to, you know, do something all together, everybody. But I was like, well, we already have this. We can do it around the house. It's fun. It's free. Like, let's Let's make the most of it. And they, they had a really good time. So Random things inflation causes. <laughs> yes. And then I had a very interesting experience. This is, this is like the shenanigans I get into. Um, so as we were like going down doing the little hayride thing, we live on like a more like a private road. There's like a few houses on our road or whatever. So I was like, you know, I had the tractor going around and, and, and coming there's back. Like, that's a dead end road too, right? Yeah, there's yeah. no traffic on. It's just neighborhood yeah. traffic. <clears throat> so one of my neighbors like pulls up in her car and kind of stops me and was like, hey, can I ask you a favor? And I got like, the whole family's like on the, the hay ride thing in the back. And I was like, okay. She was, and she was like, we have a, a, a dog who's gonna be passing soon. And she was like, it's a 185 pound new fee. And she's like, we physically can't dig a hole like the ground is so hard it's like all clay she's like we can't dig a hole to be able to bury our dog oh she was like do you have like the because i had the tractor she's like do you have the equipment to help us dig a hole and i was like actually i do i can definitely help you dig a oh. hole i was like i'm so sorry that's such a bummer but oh, i was like i can man. definitely help you out so i'll be getting a call at some point to dig a dog grave oh. for my neighbor <laughs> I'm like I mean, that's such a so just it's what they need i know exactly yeah. and it's like and they were like they were nerd they were like we don't know how we're gonna be able to bury this dog yeah. and so i was like it's a neighborly thing to do but i'm just like how many people can just be like you know while i was given an impromptu hayride oh. to my family i got solicited to dig a dog grave and i was like wow this is this is a very <laughs> interesting situation, yeah, but it's a big dog. You know, it's a it's a big dog. Yeah, I've my, seen, my, my I've seen that dog before, and it's like it's like a it's like a bear. Yeah. It's like a is bear a running black, around. Black one. It's a brown, brown. Like a dark brown. Oh, yeah. Wow, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. My uh, my my dad's, sweet dogs. My but, dad's you know. family had a black one for a number of years. Yeah, it's a big dog. Huge dog. Oh it's it is miserable to be a Newfoundland in Virginia summers. I can imagine. Like can it, imagine. that dog was. Not it's super so much happy. Hair. No, yeah, like yeah. spent all summer under the deck. I remember. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so there you go. I'll be doing a neighborly duty at some point there. That's cool. Of you. Um, let's see here. I've been throwing more sharp things. Um, so I had, I had like a, you know, I built the target and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I bought some like throwing knives. They're like, you know, made to be throwing knives. Yeah. You know. Um, so I bought those and then I also actually bought some throwing axes. You did. I did buy some because oh I was gosh. like, you know what? I am actually really enjoying doing this. And I had just like a straight up hatchet, but it's like very clunky. It's not made, yeah, it's it's not, not made for it's throwing. It's not weighted right. Right. So it's like I'm doing it, but I bought like actual throwing axes and like it's not just the blade on the front, but there's like a blade on the top and it's, it's sharp on the other end too. So oh, it's cool. like it like increases the likelihood of it a right. sharp thing sticking into you the wood by like, points, like, by like 70%. Yeah, so it's you, like, you it's, give it's, yourself points. So like, all right, if I hit this, if the main axe blade hits, that's five points. If the yeah. handle hits, eh, one. Yeah, exactly. So that's been fun. That's so cool. I'm throwing it. In Is it like a paracord wrapped or? The throwing knives that I have are paracord wrapped. What the about axes the? are just, just steel. steel? Oh, yeah, okay. Just steel. And they're pretty thin. So they're lighter and a little easier. To throw. Oh, okay. So I'm like, yeah, just enjoying it more and able to focus a little more on like, the 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 aiming of the target not right. like trying to master the specific technique i still try and get it to where like the the normal blade part would hit in sure but, you know still that's fun it's less of just like a thunk and then hitting the ground i mean like 
right you know, over and go over. get it yeah and it was like a set of three so i can like throw three at a time and then go up and get them and nice. go back and all that but i don't know still enjoying it while it's like 95 degrees out and i'm just i'm like oh let me just throw it a couple of times then i start sweating and i'm like well i'm already sweating so i'll just keep throwing oh my god <laughs> it's fun i don't know i think i'm I'm getting pretty rural, I gotta say, Drew. Hey, with the hayride are... thing, yeah, man, you're fully committed. Get yourself some some overalls. Yeah, between like the hayride and the stuff for the dump and the the archery and the, all that. Yeah, yeah, can someone find some cargo overalls for Brian? Something with like some some thigh pockets. I do own some overalls. Yeah, yeah. but do they have thigh pockets? Yeah, of course they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like. Well, they're like no, regular, no. I'm like talking about thigh pockets, pockets like where thigh your pockets? cargo, like where cargo pockets. I don't think should I have be. any cargo. That's what you need. You need cargo. Okay, I'd be cargo overalls. It's got like the chest pocket. Of course, you yeah. know that's a given. Yeah. Um, and then speaking of bows and arrows, you mentioned that you had your grandfather's bow. That I did. You brought it in. That I did. And I now have possession of Drew's. Enjoy finding a bow. string for that. And so I had a string because, of course, does it need one to be a particular string? Though? Uh, that's the thing. So I have a string for a bow that I was actually making years ago. Oh. And but it was I you know, making a bow is hard and I didn't really know what I was doing. So I mean I did it. It shoots, but it's more like a long bow. It's not mm-hmm. a recurve bow. It's an entirely different string length. Yeah. So I have a string oh, fit yeah. that bow and I was like, "Well, maybe it'll fit." And I was like, "Well, it's like a foot too long." So oh, no. Wow. Yeah. So I'm going to have to go and get a string specifically yeah. for it, but that's okay. They're not crazy expensive. So cool. I might actually do that today because yeah. we got a dinner to go out to tonight and that's like right. not enough time for me to drive home. So I'm like, well, I actually could go get a string for the, but I like all this stuff. I'm like, I'm so far beyond being able to explain this to Rachel in any way that makes sense. It's just like, I'm not even going to bother. She just knows I'm into shenanigans and whatever. She does. As long as I don't hurt myself, she'll be fine. Um, but I will say because we had the little compound bow and we had all the cousins and stuff like that. I got to like go with all the kids, all the kids, and let them practice with obvious instruction and lots of safety guidance yeah. stuff. Uh, but I actually got Rachel to shoot. She had never shot a bow and arrow in her life, and I was like offered her. I was like, "Do you want to try?" Because like the kids had done it, and my niece and nephew. And I was like, "Rachel, come on." You Did try she not it? do it last time? She literally has never shot a bow and arrow in her life. Oh. And I got her to try it. Nice. So she shot five arrows, and I think she's good. She'll probably never shoot again in her life. But <laughs> she did like it. Shannon. She had a pretty good attitude about it. And she was like pulling back. She's like, oh, this is really hard. And I was like, this is like a 10-pound draw. It's like it's this the is, easiest possible one. Yeah, but they give the kids A 10-pound like, compound. Compound. Yeah, I was like, it's... But, it, you know, it is work. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's like weird muscles that if you're not doing sure. stuff like that, it's interesting. But then her sister tried it too, and... You know, Ellie's getting pretty decent at it. Joseph was so funny. She's just, he's just like Rachel. You know, Rachel he's tried like, and she okay. was like, yeah, this is kind of hard. And he's like, she's like, yeah, I'm good. And yeah. Joseph, he like shot like five of me. He's like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> just went inside and I was like, okay. But Ellie was out there hanging with me and shooting them more. And, you know, so it's like, okay, cool. It'll be like me and Ellie's thing. Nice. That's fine. And of course we would like shoot and miss it and go f- try to find the arrows oh, in the yeah. yard. And that's all part of the experience, you know, but that's fun. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting when I, cause the one you gave me is a 45 pound draw, a hefty boy, which is not like, not even the craziest, it's like hunting bows and stuff can be like 70, 80 pounds. I can't, like some of them can get up there. If you're like trying to kill a mammoth, I guess. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I can shoot that thing. That will probably feel tough to me. I mean, I've shot it before when I was younger Yeah, and it's not it's like doable. It's, not, it's doable. Okay. It's, it, it puts some power behind it though. I bet. I bet. Like, might, might stress test my hay bales. It might. <laughs> well, we'll see. Um, let's see what else. What other shenanigans? Got your bow. Oh, and then we went to uh, Five Below, which is like a great place That's to go. That's always fun. Kids have a little bit of spending money because mm-hmm. they just have weird stuff there. That's those like, little you don't ran- really find. No, it's as it's much. great for those like little random surprise packet things that kids yeah. like. You know, it has like a dozen of those things. Yeah, and they got like interesting variations of candy you yeah. know that you can get there so the kids just had a good time there but i found some random crap there that i was interested in one of which was uh, i bought a puzzle that was there it's called the impossible puzzle it's basically just like clear like lexan plastic and it's all cut out and all the pieces are fairly similar to each other but oh, just God. slightly different why would you do that so to there's yourself? no picture to go off of it's a 250 piece puzzle which is not crazy but yeah, it's this little puzzle, and it's just all clear pieces. Oh man! And and I and I solved it, but it took me like a solid two and a half hours because basically you have to 
try every single piece. Like there's really not much to go off of. There's and, not a uh, bit of that that sounds fun to me. <laughs> I thought it sounded fun. It was five oh. bucks. I was like, I'll get five oh. bucks of enjoyment out of this. So yeah, I made a totally clear puzzle. Sounds like a punishment. Yeah. Oh my God. It's better Ben's than, Rubik's Cube sounds it's like punishment It's better than being in too. 90 degree heat. You know, it's all a matter of... Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> there you go. You, you Once you compare it to the power yeah, under the heat, you, it's you like, just, yeah, whatever. You have set your paradigm. <laughs> You know, that's all I do, man. That's all I do. Anyway, those are my shenanigans recently. But uh, yeah, that's what I've been up to. No, you all right there, Drew? That's a weird. Is that Taco Bell kicking you in You can't here, scoot too far back on these because then they make weird <laughs> sounds. Yeah, mine's not making as much of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's really prominent. I hope that's picking up on the mic. Uh, anyway, we got a quick company update. And then I have I have several fun facts for today. Oh, okay. Several. All right, company updates real quick. We have Fountain Pen 101 Part 5. Part 5, the completion of the series. This one is how to write with a fountain pen. And I'm curious what y'all think of this one because this is the, I don't know, least pen specific one, I guess. We haven't really talked a lot about like posture and how to hold the pen and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, kind of take a swing on this one, but I think you'll like it. Um, and then obviously we've talked about the DC Pen Show kind of ad nauseum at this point, but that's going to be happening this weekend. We are going to be... You might be listening to this on your way there. Hey, that would be cool. I think it happens pretty regularly like because we publish on Fridays. People and drive, yeah. Pen shows are on Absolutely. the weekends. I've seen people at pen shows multiple times and they've said, I was just listening to you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, if you do... So drive safely. I want What I want to do, because I have not been to a pen show with Drew since we started the pen cast, I want to hear people just randomly yell out things like turkey hammock and stuff like that to you. Well, how about to you? As you go. I guess they could do it to me, too. They I just associate yeah, yeah, You're, yeah. you're going to be there. Yeah. That, you don't need to witness if me. You're going to be at the DC Pen Show. Just yell random inside jokes from the pen cast at us, and that's just going to be very enjoyable. You're going to enjoy that? I will enjoy that. Okay, well, I'll enjoy that yell it at Brian. Yell it at Drew, too. <laughs> yell it louder at Drew. He'll be the one wearing a loud shirt, and I'll just be the one that's just... I think I'm gonna. I think I'm going to wear my jean jacket, because I haven't... Been able, I haven't been With able all the to, patches. I haven't been able to wear it because it's been so freaking it hot. Yeah. So, but I'm like, if I'm gonna be at a hotel like be all day, pumping and stuff. Yeah, I should be. It should be temperate in there. Yeah. I just want to wear it because I've done so much work on it, but I can't. Like, I don't know what I should wear. It's so freaking hot outside. I got my banana shirt. That's like my channeling Drew energy shirt. I, I, you know, we haven't had a new Goulet shirt in a while. We haven't. Yeah. yeah. I have my green one. I like that one. Okay. I'll have to think of something. Since Randall left, I'm the only one with a green one now. Ooh, interesting. That's right. Okay. Look how special I am. There you go. Well, we're going to be recording. So next week is going to be episode number 100. That's right. That's the one that we're recording at the show. This is the, the last double-digit Pencast that's episode. Right. And in celebrating that, that's what the wrap-up today is all about. Oh. The fun facts. So we'll wrap it up here. Thank you for watching. Blah, blah, blah. Leave us feedback, all that fun stuff. But I got a lot of fun facts. I want to get to this quickly. Um, so... Basically, because this is number 99, I was like, I'm going to look up a bunch of fun 99 facts, things relating to the number and or the year. I hear that many, that, that's how many bottles of beer are on the wall. There were a lot of facts that I looked up that involved that song, but none of them were that's terribly interesting. Um, so this is kind of random. The atomic number for Einsteinium is 99. That, that I, What the heck is Einsteinium? Funny you should ask, Drew. Oh boy. It's named after Albert Einstein. It was discovered in the debris from the first H-bomb explosion in 1952. So it was a result of like the nuclear fallout that they discovered a new element. They called it Einsteinium. Oh. And it's got So is that on the periodic table? Number. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's like it's like the bonus elements down at the bottom. Oh, okay. Those are like the nuclear oh. like elements and stuff like that. That's uh, like the stuff discovered. I never later. look at those. Yeah. I mean, I never look at any of it, but I definitely <laughs> never look at those. Yeah. Oh, okay. Check it out. So it's kind of like Florida and Alaska. A little bit. Yeah. 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 Cause they're like, there's, there's the map of the U S and then there's the extra squares that they have it. There you go. Added Hawaii. Me. Hawaii. What did I say? He's in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, Florida's like down there still, <laughs> I'm in but Hawaii. It's, you know, it's connected, but <laughs> yes, I mean, Florida's kind of its own little thing anyway, it but certainly is. whatever. Um, apparently the only number retired league wide in the national hockey league is number 99 which is Wayne Gretzky's jersey. Oh. Didn't know that. There we go. Because we're not sports people. Uh, 99 is the only number below 100 that can't be scored with two darts in the game of darts. Oh. Bet you wanted to know that. I, every time I've learned anything about darts, I've been more confused. So. It's really amazing watching professional like darts players. 
I mean, how how long how long accurate. did you live without with thinking that the bullseye was like the best thing to hit all the time? Oh, like most of my life. Yeah, because I had a dartboard at some point in my life, but never was taught how to play it's like, it. No, no. So <laughs> you sometimes you don't want to hit the bullseye. What? Right. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the in the English language, you can spell out all numbers from one to ninety nine without using the letter A. Do you know that? No, I didn't. Now you know. What? Yeah. Don't what about that. eight? <laughs> E-I-G-H-T. A-T-E. <laughs> if you're using an A, you're spelling it wrong. Oh, no. Um, apparently, PayPal was viewed as one of the 10 worst business ideas of 1999. Oh, terrible. Clearly. It won't go anywhere. History is not on the side of that one. No. Do you know what the most popular film was of 1999? 1999. Oh, man. Uh, oh man it's a classic revered for its time 99 not at all made fun of the mummy returns i don't know no it is star wars episode one the phantom menace that was 99 that was 99 oh i knew that yeah jar jar banks that's still as much as i dislike <laughs> that movie it's the movie that i have seen the most times in the theater Really? Mm -hmm. I saw it like four times. Of any movie? Of any movie. Wow. I've only seen bad movies multiple times. Like, <laughs> that, I don't know. Because at the time, I thought they were sweet. Like, uh, that movie, I'm like, this is amazing. And then later, I'm like, no, this is unwatchable. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just kidding. So all Star Wars movies have redeeming elements of them. I, I, I'm not okay. going to hate on them. But um, in retrospect, I don't know why I watched it so many times. But then, uh, other than that one, I saw the Planet of the Apes movie with Mark Wahlberg Three times in the theater. Wow. I liked it. I thought it was cool. Okay. And now I'm like, oh my God, why? Yeah. But you know what? I also thought the crow was awesome and the Highlander was awesome. Generally speaking, if I like something, I'll like it for the rest of my life. Not the case with movies. Movies definitely, hmm. ha you can remember them too fondly and you wow. revisit them and they're they're just not what you at one point thought they were. Interesting. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen a movie in the theater twice. Oh, man, I've seen I don't know if I have. I've seen a bunch of them, but never more than The Phantom Menace. You know what movie I, I thought was going to be terrible, but it actually held up just fine? Hmm. The Phantom Okay. with Billy Zane because it was always kind of bad. Yeah. And it's now still kind of bad. Yeah. But it was never, it never fooled anybody. No right. one ever thought it was awesome. It's like Mystery Men. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great comparison. No one ever thought that movie was the best, and you mm -hmm. revisit it, and it, it is just as it once was. Something like The Crow. It's or, all a matter of or, expectations. Or, or Boondock Saints or Highlander. There was a time where, you know, if you were a teenager, you thought those movies were sweet. Okay, Boondock Saints is kind of sweet. It, go I back like go that. back and watch it. I've wa I've rewatched it. Recently? Not, not in the last 10 years. Yeah, don't. Really? Don't. It's not no. good? No. Oh, come on. It's no. What's changed so much? It's it's just ridiculous. Of but course, it's ridiculous. No, no, no. But still, Drew, I like the Fast and Furious franchise. I, mm, yeah. it's, it's not more ridiculous than that. Uh, see, Fast it, it Fast and Furious doesn't take itself as seriously as Boondock Saints did, though. I it's it's super cringy now. Don't do it. Keep keep it the way it is in no, your I mind. Really want, no, I really want to watch oh, it. God, don't. Anyway, that you've told me not to. I'm like that. To me, that makes the Phantom pretty cool. I'm like, all right, Phantom. Okay, I don't think I've ever seen the Phantom. What about the Saint with Val Kilmer? Remember that one? Oh yeah, that is very forgettable. That was a very forgettable. Movie. Very forgettable. <laughs> I movie. saw it and I immediately was just like, yeah, I'm not gonna remember any of this. No, same. It's forgettable. Yeah, same. I remember um, that was one of the last movies that Robert Evans produced. Um, he was a famous movie producer. Yeah. You know, we had a documentary made out of him, which is a great documentary, by the way. The kid stays in the picture. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's that's the, like the most notable thing I remember about the Saint. I don't remember anything okay. about the plot. There you go. Yeah. Uh, do you know what the most popular tv show was of 1999 oh god uh alias nope who wants to be a millionaire oh wow Remember that? yeah actually like the three different airings of that it aired on different days of the week it was so popular wow all three it was like a tuesday sunday and a thursday or whatever they were all like one two and three the most popular wow and then it was like er and friends Oh, why did I say alias? <laughs> I don't even know if alias is on at that said, time. No, I don't even know either. I just alias picked the most popular. Sure. I just picked the most late 90s show I could think of. <laughs> it's pretty late 90s. <laughs> X-Files? 
maybe like that was no, more, maybe that was more early 90s mid 90s i think i yeah, don't know yeah x-files might have been canceled by then yeah friends obviously that, that friends, should have been yeah, my that answer that was definitely popular yeah yeah anyway. um and then the last thing i have is top 10 foods of 1999 some of these you'll really resonate top with. Top 10? How can you have a top food? I don't know. Are you talking about like a grocery store item? I don't know. This was just a list from a site that I saw. None of this is verified okay. strongly. Go for it. Um, chicken Caesar salad nope. apparently was big in 99. All right. Crab cakes. Okay. Crystal Pepsi. That was a thing Remember in 99? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought it died apparently before it then. The top 10 according to some random list. Maybe it came back. Um, Dunkaroos and Gushers. Well, I know you remember those. Oh, yeah. Dunk, Gushers never went anywhere. <laughs> They're still around. Uh, goat cheese, apparently. You know what? I will say goat cheese had its time. Yeah. Goat cheese. Of, of all the still ones. Still around. Of still all the ones strong. You, of all the ones you mentioned, though, I do remember goat cheese being kind of a just, fad food. Just you wait. Oh, God. All There's right. more. All right. Hot pockets. Yeah. Okay. They were like on the rise, I think. I mean, they never left in my mind. Sure. I associate hot pockets with like. Post high school, like college age, I ate a lot of hot pockets. Yeah. Okay. Then Campbell's chunky soup. Oh, okay. It's Campbell's had, chunky soup had a time. They had, I sustained myself through my early. They 20s. had a lot of commercials around that time too. Oh, heck yeah! With a football guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Salisbury steak, Campbell's chunky soup. Mm. I love like it. Like two thousand percent your daily sodium. Oh, yeah. Love it. Um, Lunchables. I knew you remember that. That was, that was from like our school days. Lunchables are still a thing. Uh, molten chocolate cake. Yep. That's that, a big se- thing. that seems a little more like trendy. Chilies, you yep. know, get one of those. Yep, definitely. I, I'm definitely yeah. So far, that and goat <laughs> cheese. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm. Mm-hmm. Uh, pizza bagels, like, like pizza, like pizza like, bagels, like the the like bagel know, bites, bagel bites. Yeah, like that kind well, of. Well, when pizza's on a bagel, That's you can thing. eat pizza anytime. I know pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, yeah, pizza supper time. Supper time. <laughs> Yes. No, we, we still buy those on the regular. Yeah. Bagel bites and pizza rolls, absolutely. My kids are a fan of the bagel bites. Oh, yeah. You got yeah. Them. Every now and then you're like, my the roof of my mouth hasn't been burned in like <laughs> five right. minutes. I need to have some pizza rolls. 100%. Uh, and then the last one is Slim Fast. Oh, okay. I yeah. can see that. Being it really definitely popular. Yeah. Definitely. Because yeah. everybody was eating like Hot Pockets and pizza bagels and molten <laughs> chocolate cake. Then you got to bring it back for like the That's Caesar right. salad and the Slim Fast, you know? Yeah. I know. Caesar salad and crab cakes often feel like they should belong together to me. I, I feel like whenever I've had seafood and a salad, it's always been a Caesar salad. I mean, the anchovies is what yeah, makes, made, gives the Caesar dressing yeah. its tang. Yeah, so they kind of belong together. Yeah. We had, we had uh, crab cakes last week. Rachel's loves some crab cakes. Oh, yeah. That's like her favorite. Love crab cakes. Yeah, and I like chicken Caesar salad. Look at that. Caesar dressing is like the only dressing I really like, to be honest. And I did not discover that until I was like 20 seven or something like that. I think Caesar is usually a, a taste acquired later. But I don't like other dressings. Yeah. Like I would eat dry salad my entire youth into my early adulthood. How about that? Until I discovered Caesar dressing. Do you like the ginger stuff they have at Hibachi restaurants? I don't like ginger. Oh, okay. I like... Does it taste like soap to you? No. Okay. Cilantro a little bit. Cilantro, oh, you're a soap cilantro I eat, I eat cilantro, but I'm like borderline. I'm like, yeah, I can mm. see the soapiness. It's more the smell. Mm. But the taste of it, I'm cool with. Interesting. Um, All right. But yeah, anyway. Well, we definitely went over things. two hours. We did. We're at 220. We kn- I knew we could do it. Yeah. Anyway. I, I believed in us as well. I just I, I love knew. how we're turning this into, into an achievement. Well, we know it's all in. From, it's all a matter of perspective. It's all a matter of perspective. That's, That's the right. lesson for this episode, That's ladies right. and gents. If you're out there power washing your deck in the heat and you're listening to our pencast, then you'll appreciate the extra length. Um, that's all we got for you this time. We've done one through ninety nine. Next week, one hundred. We planned for it well, but I'm just ready for things to go wrong and it's not something be not to go be normal and that's okay we'll just roll with it but anyway why start being perfect now we appreciate it. exactly again we've never set that as an expectation here so i think we'll be fine uh, but anyway thanks for watching well thanks for hanging with us this long for so many episodes and uh we will catch you on the next one at 100 thanks for watching and right on <laughs>